Ladies and gentlemen of the undefeated, another day, another dollar, and here we are. We've got a lot to talk about. As you can see, I'm kicking it off today an hour later in the start time, but that doesn't mean that you're getting any sort of diminished content. We're ready to rock. We're ready to roll, and we already have a great showing. We got Kevin Rocket. We got Jared. We got Antoine. Who else we have in here? Jor, Ollie's, Cynthia, Big Bama Brand. Happy y'all are all in here. We got a lot to talk about. Listen, we may not have any overlays, but we're still kicking it. And uh, we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. Yesterday, to end the show on my segment, we were talking about rooms that excite. And I do need all of your help for this one. Coach Smook in the background, I might need your help as well on this one as well. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you're thinking. Already, run it up. I want to see what rooms y'all are excited about. That way I can get a little bit of a gauge on everything. And we're going to go through every single room y'all mentioned, top to bottom, total rundown. Outside of that, Kevin, my man, what's up? Anthony, happy y'all are in here. We're going to have a great day. We're going to have a great day. After we talk about that, we're going to revisit what I ranted, what I raved about yesterday, and that's Saban ruffling feathers. Saban went to Capitol Hill, spoke truth, a truth that we have all accepted, but what people can't accept is who the messenger is. It turns out, if you are supremely good at your craft, you are therefore exempt from talking about it. And I'm going to rant a bit more about that because it makes me it makes me angry, quite honestly. Next, we're going to talk about Cruton. You think we're going to have a day in March where I don't talk about recruiting? No, that's going to be something we hit every single day. Always got to break down recruiting because I've been saying it for a long time. I've been saying it since January. March was the takeoff period, and here we are. After that, we're going to talk about the leadership of Jalen Milrow. You heard about how he was the first one into the facility even when Terry and Arnold was here, but that trend is continuing, and it's starting a competition to where guys have accepted, hey, I might not be the first person in the facility, but I'm going to get there, and I'm going to get there real early to at least be the second person. We need to talk about how that couldn't have come at a better time during this transition, and as always, ladies and gentlemen, you have something you want talked about. You drop it down in chat. We cover it. We're always going to hit the undefeated chat talk. But before I dive in, as always, we got to pay some bills around here. Kyle does a fantastic job. Taylor does a fantastic job. And we've been lucky to get some sponsors here. And I did want to give them a quick shout out, even if we don't have the graphics, right? Just to let them know. We appreciate everything they do for the show. You have your residence in in Ocean City, Maryland. You use our code, you get 20% off. Thank you to the residence in, the good people over there. And I can promise you one thing. I'm looking at being in that area in the next few months, and I might be I might be doing a little bit of a live stream from the Residence Inn in Ocean City. That might uh, that might have to happen. We might have to get in there, get active. I'll I'll be poolside for y'all, and uh, you know what? We might do it in the we might do the bathing suit, the whole nine yards. Maybe Blaze will make an appearance outside of that. Speaking of Blaze, I know Blaze would enjoy this one. Rogue Shop, Promo, Bama, Legal CBD, and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're into working out, there's no better way to recover in a natural way for your muscles, for your aches, for your mobility, and it's a holistic approach to trying and fix things. A lot of things out there, ibuprofen, all fine, but if you can get your hands on some CBD, absolutely going to help you out. And lastly, but certainly not least, special shout out to Demetrius Maynard and the Maynard Group supporting what we do over here. Can't wait to get more in-depth. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. And we're going to talk about rooms that excite. We have Kevin Lynch already starting it off with the DB room. Jared says, Blaze poolside is hilarious. I don't know. Coach, how many people in here do you think know about Blaze? 10%? 20%? We haven't unleashed Blaze yet because I don't know if the people are ready for Blaze. We haven't unleashed. We have him. We have him caged up in the back. You don't worry about that. Kevin says he wants to start off in the defensive back room. And Kevin, I don't know that there's a better room to start off in. Whenever we talk about the defensive back room for the Alabama Crimson Tide, this is something we've talked about forever. You may not have the experience, but what you do have is an abundance of talent. Whenever we look at this, the parting gift Nick Saban gave Alabama was supremely gifted DBs. Whenever you're talking Jalen Mbakwe, who Smook and I talked about yesterday, looks bigger than we both thought he would already and i mean he's still going through spring by the end of spring come fall camp he's going to be looking real right in this position we know he's a supreme athlete but now he gets to focus on one position 
That to me is compelling. When you have a guy like a Jalen Mbakwe or like a Noah Carter that are so supremely gifted that they just master everything you give them, now imagine when their focus is singular. Now imagine when Mbakwe's focus is singular, when Noah Carter's focus is singular. You thought they were superstars before. You just wait and see what happens when they drill their position and really master their craft there. Sky's the limit for both of those individuals. Jalen Mbakwe, fantastic addition to the class, fantastic recruiter. We've talked about him as a recruiter, but ladies and gentlemen, he is a subliminal athlete. Can't wait to see what he's able to do there. Gary for, or Gary Bama for life with the $2. The myth, the legend. Ty, how are we doing today? Gary, thank you for being here. Thank you for rocking with us. Thank you for being here in this Thursday morning. Thank you for the $2 donation. And yeah, we're doing good, man. We're doing good. Enjoying the day, getting ready for the weekend, and really excited that every day that moves forward, not only are we a day closer to A-Day, we're a day closer to the season kicking off, and you already know I can't wait for that. Jor says, does Blaze have bloodshot eyes and the munchies? Blaze pleads the fifth. Caleb King says, Blaze Hayes, what a name. Well, it was much closer to reality than you know, and uh, that's the sad part. Blaze Hayes, is that was almost a real thing. You know what I mean? Good morning, Monica. Happy you're in here. Rocket says, good morning. Happy you're here. Brian says, Blaze is a beast. Blaze has got some glorious hair. That's all I'll say. Uh, that, that man right there has got a dude that is the envy of the town. Let me tell you what. He shows up. He starts letting those locks fly. Jared says, dipping out to get the baby. Hey, no no worries, Jared. No worries. Family always first. Happy you were able to be in here. Travel Panier Sports, of course, man. Of course, happy you're in here. Wouldn't be the same without you guys. But we've talked Jalen and Bakwe. He's not the only superstar Alabama got in the freshman class. Dare I say... That could be applied to any of these guys. I think they're all going to be huge. They were all superstars in high school, and thus far, very positive things. We've talked Zay Mincy, the versatility he has that he brings to the table. That's going to be compelling, especially if you start needing to min-max your roster. Xavier Mincy can play several different positions. He is a rangy defensive back, and he was hyper impressive at the All-American game. I always re reference that. There was the throw that he guarded where he was perfectly in phase the entire time and once he realized that the receiver wasn't going to just beat him he continued to be in phase while finding the ball and tracking it and getting an interception and I was watching that thinking okay yeah I've seen high school guys get interceptions but it was the way you handled the beginning of the route the media the intermediary per portion of the route and the top of the route he won every single phase of the rep and got the interception. And he was locking dudes down all night. Zay Mincy has got ability. Speaking of dudes who were doing work during that All-American game, what about Zabian Brown, who was going heads up with Jeremiah Smith? That was an amazing, amazing back and forth. Jeremiah Smith got some wins. Zabian Brown got some wins, but really highlighted these are two elite prospects, and they're going at it. And to me, that's what it's all about. I know every scout, every person in charge of the ratings was watching closely for Zabian Brown and Jeremiah Smith. And what do you know? Zabian Brown held his own. Jeremiah Smith, number one player in the nation, ladies and gentlemen, at wide receiver. An absolute monster. Zabian Brown was out there handling. He was out there holding his own, and it was a fantastic battle to watch. So you're talking about the cornerback positions, which could feature a Jalen Mbakwe, which could feature a Zabian Brown, Zay Mincy. But if you need Zay Mincy more as a safety role, he can do that too. That's that versatility we talk about. But if we do focus on these safeties, you have your new guys in Red Morgan. You have Drake Kirkpatrick Jr., both of which are going to be very exciting prospects. You're already hearing a lot of positive towards Red Morgan. And those are just the new guys. If we're talking about what Alabama already had there, don't sleep on Jaleel Hurley. Another year in the system. Very smart individual. Former five-star has got the ability. You maintain Malachi Moore, I've talked about this before, that was huge. Malachi Moore's experience, his football IQ is going to be massive for this secondary. And then you get Keon Saab. Keon Saab, in my opinion, was a huge win in the transfer portal. Whenever we look at Keon Saab relative to other top safeties last year, I've always referenced this. 
Caleb Downs had an 85 rating per pro football focus. Keon Sab had an 82.7, and he didn't even have the opportunities to learn in the same manner that Caleb Downs did. Basically, why I bring you that, I think Alabama got someone that the general college football field doesn't quite understand how good he is. I think Michigan fans knew. I think Michigan fans know how good Keon Sab is. I think Alabama fans are about to figure out how good he is. And unfortunately, if you're a team in the SEC, I think you're about to figure out how good Keon Sab is as well. Chris from New Jersey in here. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Good morning, Monica. Happy y'all are in here on this Thursday. So you've got all of that there. You have Tony Mitchell who is a really interesting defensive back as well. Another guy that has got supreme versatility to his game, right? I mean, you can min-max what you do. To top it all off, you have Damani Jackson. And Damani Jackson is someone who's already received praise from the coaching staff. And he has some veteran experience. Now, he came from USC, but we do know, because I've had so many people say, but Ty, at USC, I felt like the film left a little bit to be desired. Here's what I'll say. If you go back and watch that UFC defense, I don't blame any player on that defense. Go watch years of Alex Grinch, and I hate to take shots. That's t- I, I, I don't like taking shots at coaches, but real is real. Alex Grinch has not put together a top defense ever since 2013 Washington State. He got to Ohio State where he inherited a top 15 defense. It went down to like the number 50 defense in the nation. The next year, the only thing that changed is that they moved on from Alex Grinch. Once again, it was a top 15 defense. He inherited the Oklahoma defense. That was a defense that never made it to the top 45 in the nation. He inherited the USC defense and the rest is history. So I think a lot of people have been wondering about Damani Jackson, but I would also like to point out that he didn't come from a defensive system that was known for helping its players out. He came from a defensive system that just wasn't working. And I think that a lot can be made about what he did at USC, but we also need to understand this is someone Nick Saban wanted. This is someone who has supreme athleticism. And you're already seeing the new coaching staff say that. He is now in an environment conducive to defensive success, USC under Alex Grinch, under Benny Wiley, the strength and conditioning coordinator over there, that's not going to be conducive to success. It's just not. I said it at the very beginning of last year. I'm going to maintain it. Excited to see what they do now that they have a new defensive coordinator, but they still have Benny Wiley at the strength and conditioning coach. And that's where I have a little bit of questions for USC. Neither here nor there. That's what we're looking at in the secondary. A lot of talent. You have experience in Malachi Moore. You have some experience in Damani Jackson, though not at this place. But what you do have is a supreme amount of talent. Depth is going to be really interesting to see who emerges, but excited for that room. Any other rooms anybody wants covered? Because the next room I'm going to go to is definitely offensive line. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever we're talking about offensive line, Alabama fans everywhere need to be very happy. Because Alabama has three offensive linemen graded in the top 10 for interior offensive linemen per pro football focus. You've got Parker Brailsford, you've got Jaden Roberts, and you have Tyler Booker. That is a fantastic place to start. Now, offensive line is the position you all have heard me rant and rave and shake my fist in the air like a boomer talking about. Why? It's because Alabama has found success in spite of their offensive line. And that's not to say that there aren't players on that offensive line that are phenomenal. I think that the offensive line had plenty of guys on it that in the right environment are going to be stars. But it just wasn't a good fit. I said last year, whenever I heard Coach Wolford say that this offensive line was bigger than an NFL offensive line, a bit of a red flag to me. Because the NFL, they can get whoever they want. The NFL has access to the best nutritionists in the world. The NFL has access to the best talent in the world. So it's not that they can't get an offensive line that's any bigger. It's that they don't. And at that point, I started asking the question, why? I don't think that's going to continue. And as the year went on, you saw it start to get better, but you still saw inconsistencies. With this new offense, with this new offensive line coach, I think a lot of that's going to get solved. Now, you have battles at the tackle position. 
But luckily, I'm excited about the talent you have. You have Olaf Salinan, you have Wilkin Formby, Miles McVay, Elijah Pritchett, all battling for those tackle positions. It's going to be a heck of a battle. What ends up happening, we have to see. But the one thing I will say is the offensive line is going to be better. It has to be better. It has absolutely got to be better. Now, Jalen Milrow is going to be better for having experienced what he did last year. And I know in a roundabout way, you would you would never want him to experience it. But he has now gone through a year where he had to find a way to succeed with an offensive line that was really inconsistent. If that consistency gets down, it's also going to help Jalen Milrow. Everything is hand in hand. So I can't wait to see what the offensive line looks like. We have someone, Glenn, saying tight end room. How do you think we are going to be, Ty? So this is really interesting. And I think moving Caleb Odom says two things to me. One, it says that they love Caleb Odom. It says that they are trying to figure out a way to get him on the field. But two, it makes me almost ask a question. Are they very impressed with what they have in Dipri or a Danny Lewis there that they feel like they're going to maximize the ability of the roster so that they can have Odom out wide, but still have one of those guys on the field. And if that answer is yes, then I'm excited. I've made it no secret that I'm excited for Danny Lewis. I think he is a really interesting tight end. And I think he's one that would fit in very well. But you also have CJ Dipri. And I'm really excited to see what he's going to be able to do in this offense. The tight end position is one we are going to have to watch for because you do have both of those guys. You still have some names in the room. But at the point where you moved Odom out to wide receiver, in my opinion, that means that, one, they love what Odom brings to the table. But, two, they're trying to maximize who they can get on the field at the same time. In my opinion, if you didn't care for what you had at the tight end position, you may keep Odom there, work him up, that way you still have something in that room. You're like, okay, yeah, we have got someone there that will hurt this defense. At the point where you're moving him to wide receiver, I hope it's a sign that they like what they have in that tight end room, and they're just trying to maximize how they can take advantage of defenses. Nick Scottish says, I still think Caleb Odom should play tight end so we can have another other dynamic wide receivers out there. Listen, here's what I will say, Nick. This new offensive staff, if there was – ever an offensive staff I was going to trust. This is certainly one of them. With Kalen DeBoer, who was a former wide receiver, with Coach Shepard out there, if they look at Caleb Odom and they say, hey, we need you out wide, I'm going to trust them because they, they've they seen something. I think, personally, Nick, I think that Caleb Odom was more explosive than even this new coaching staff thought. Right? I think it was probably one thing to see it on film, but whenever this new staff got around and saw Caleb Odom start going out there and moving, I think that's when they were like, oh, this is different. This guy is different. He has got a different level of ability that we have to try and maximize. That's my opinion. My opinion. Ruben Poole says, late to the party, but I'm here. We'll be in and out. Dang. Hey, no worries, Ruben. Most important thing is that you're here, you're hanging out, and that's what we love. Nicole, thank you for being in here. Lewis Odom on the blocking for Haynes. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm just thinking, especially with how good this offensive staff is at identifying wide receivers, I think it was a situation that they got in Tuscaloosa. They've obviously familiar with who Caleb Odom is. If you're a college football coach, you knew who Caleb Odom was. Let's be real, right? He was that good. But I think when they got there, that's when they were like, oh, so what we saw in film, it's backed up, but it doesn't even begin to tell the story. So that's that's going to be very exciting. Cynthia says, what's up, Ty? Great show. Thank you so much. Y'all make it what it is, right? I get to get up here and rant and rave, and you guys really do the heavy lifting. BR549 says, the offensive scheme DeBoer brings by itself will make the offensive line look light years better than the last few years. Completely agree. Completely agree. Chris says, Ty, the coaches are licking their chops with this amount of talent. 100%, Chris. They've never had access to this much talent. Kalen DeBoer has won everywhere he's gone. And this is what I said. I'm going to do one more room. I'm going to do defensive line, unless there's a request. 
But outside of that, this is one of the last things I'll say on this segment before we move forward. Everybody talks about Alabama having to rebuild, how much talent they lost. And especially if you're talking to people that are really in the know, that really have paid attention and aren't just doing lazy talking points, they will identify, hey, Alabama needs some help in the defensive background. Okay, here's what I'll say. There's more five-star talent in Alabama's defensive backroom right now than this coaching staff has had access to on an entire roster. You ask Colin Hitchler. You go ask Mo Linguist if they feel like they're in the middle of a rebuild. And I think they're going to have their eyes light up. Because I think if you ask those two guys, go ask Mo Linguist, who is just the head coach of Buffalo. How many five-stars do you have out there, coach? I don't think the answer is one. He's got three freshman five-stars. Three freshman five-stars. Tony Mitchell was a former five-star. Damani Jackson was a former five-star. Jaleel Hurley was a former five-star. They're working with more talent in one room from a five-star perspective than some of these guys had on an entire roster. So you go ask Coach Hitchler. You go ask Mo Linguist if they feel like they're rebuilding that secondary. I, don't, I think they're not going to feel like they're rebuilding anything. I feel like they feel like they have weapons ready to go. So we got a lot of people ask about the wide receiver room. I love it. I think that's a great room. So wide receiver, let's dive into it. Nick Scottish says, give me your starting wide out real quick, man. Got to hear it. So if I'm looking at this, you got to have Jalen Hale out there. Jalen Hale, in my opinion, I think he is going to be in for a big year. I think Jalen Hale, ladies and gentlemen, he got on the field as a true freshman. He started showing you this is someone who's taking reps from some of the guys that have been here. Now he's in the system for another year. He's with this offensive staff. He has that year-long relationship with Jalen Milrow. Jalen Hale, very excited to see. Next has got to be Kendrick Law. Kendrick Law, ladies and gentlemen, I think Shepard and DeBoer are going to be in such a good position with Kendrick Law. It's going to be a great problem to have. How do we get him the ball? How do we get him the ball? We're going to see a lot of creative things done with Kendrick Law. Why? Because he is an incredibly versatile athlete who is in, who's just dangerous with the ball in his hand. Figure out a way to give him the ball. Let him do the rest. So those are two right there. If we get into the three... I think Jeremy Bernard, he understands the offense. He understands what's asked of him, and he is a very talented wide receiver. Has got the speed, has got the hands, and I think his familiarity with the boar is going to be big. Now, if we're looking at who else, this is where it gets interesting. This is where it gets interesting. Could it be a Ryan Williams? Could it be a Kobe Prentice? Could it be a Caleb Odom? Here's what I do know, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to see all of those guys. You're going to see these wide receivers rotate. You're going to see them get play. That much I can tell you. Alabama's in a position where they have got several guys. Nick Scottish say Prentice, absolutely, right? Like whether with that fourth spot, if you go in four wide, is it going to be Ryan Williams? Is it going to be Kobe Prentice? Is it going to be Caleb Odom? You have a lot of options. If you talk to a lot of people, even some in the Alabama fan base, I feel like there would be the sentiment that Alabama doesn't have talent at the wide receiver position. Emmanuel Henderson, Brian Thomas says, 100%. He's going to be, I think he's going to be working from that slot position, right? Whoever maintains that slot position, he's going to be coming in there. Fantastic. Fantastic addition there, Brian Thomas. Thank you very much. Emmanuel Henderson is an unbelievably talented prospect. Want to see him on the field some way, somehow. Speed out wide, Odom is an easy first down and touchdown every time. 100%. 100%. So you start to see as, as we are going, John says, no, we have too much talent at the wide receiver position. John, I lean towards you, my man. You and I, hey, we're on the same page. I have heard for the past two years, Alabama just doesn't, doesn't have it at the wide receiver position. And I've looked at the wide receivers and I'm like, where? Where do you feel like this? Because from where I'm looking... There's an abundance of talent in the Alabama wide receiver room. We just talked about all of this. We haven't talked about Jaron Hamilton. We haven't talked about Cole Adams. We haven't talked about Bubba Hampton. Do you see the theme here? 
there's a lot of options at wide receiver. What a position group. And that's one. If you want to talk about the most exciting, man, that's a great answer. Kareem Hood with the $5. Thank you so much, Kareem. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the support. He says, good morning, Ty, and the undefeated Roll Tide. Roll Tide, Kareem. Happy you're here. Caleb Odom could be our Megatron. 100% options. Yep. I'm pumped. Debo has five stars everywhere or five-star talent everywhere, man. It's wild. Wild. Where do you rate wide receiver room? So we haven't seen it yet under this new staff, right? But I think the wide receiver room is one of Bama's strongest positions, especially with this new staff. Brian, I, I, I'm really high on this wide receiver room. I'm really high on it, and it's not from one position. It's from multiple Right, like if I look at the slot and I start doing mental gymnastics as to who could play the slot, I'm three names deep and I'm already sold. Right, like I'm three names deep into my thought process and I'm already like, that's cool. If I look at X, I'm three names deep at wide receiver X. If I go to Z, I'm three names deep at Z. Right, like I, it is a really good, really good wide receiver room. Very excited about it. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. We need to talk about Saban ruffling feathers. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Saban goes to Capitol Hill, says something we all agree with. You know what else we all agree with? Hitting that like button. Run those likes up. We got 164 in here. Let's get to 150 likes. Listen. I have no way to confirm or deny this. Coach Smook in the background once again has no way to confirm or deny this, but I heard there'll be another flip from Auburn if we hit 150 likes. Now, I'm not just a little stitious, I'm superstitious. So go ahead and hit those likes up so that we can get to that 150 and we can see who that flip will be. In all seriousness, guys, those likes are awesome for what we do. Help spread the content on the YouTube algorithm. Those interactions, that's massive. Every interaction on a video helps its reach. A view, a comment, a like, a subscription. So just hitting that like. No, Nick, I'm I'm just messing around. I'm just I'm just being funny. I'm just being funny. We're just messing around. <laughs> no, no, don't don't take me serious, Nick. We're just we're just having some fun, man. Um, but Nick Saban has been ruffling feathers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm not super active on Twitter. I don't tweet as much as I should. But over the past two days, I've been having to hold tweets back. I have tweeted and deleted because I have to ask myself, is that a good look? Should I really tweet that? Should I really tweet that? And then I'll go and delete it. Because I have seen more people try and get clicks from being disingenuous than I have since the college football playoff selection show. Everybody has a problem with what Nick Saban said, not because of what he said, because of who said it. You hear time and time again, everybody out there, and I don't just mean random people on Twitter. If this was just relegated to random people on Twitter, I wouldn't care because they have no bearing. But when I see people in the industry being disingenuous, being facetious, and being purposefully so, that drives me up a wall. You have people out there saying Nick Saban is being a boomer. He couldn't adapt. He's advocating that the players couldn't get paid. As Nick Saban sat up there and said, not only is NIL a good thing, we should have revenue sharing. The man went to Washington, D.C. and in a roundabout way said, no, the players should get paid in a more streamlined way, in a manner that guarantees them some baseline of revenue, and they can still profit from NIL, meaning you might make more money at the end of the day. But somehow that got translated into Nick Saban is the old man yelling at the sky because he doesn't want these kids to profit. How we got from what he actually said to what people think he said shows me we have a real comprehension problem in this country. There's no other way to put it. There's just no other way to put it. You are either not getting the message because you're not comprehending the message or you're not getting the message because you want to be purposefully disingenuous and facetious because of who said it. I did quote tweet one person, and I kept it up because it was 
just ridiculously silly to me. I'm having to think of adjectives to describe this as because it's peak silliness. Their tweet was something to the effect of Nick Saban made how much money at Alabama? The tweet was, and I quote, Nick Saban's net worth is estimated to be around $70 million. And their point was, since Nick Saban's net worth is that, he can't have an opinion. What really sent me up the wall is whenever that same person who tweeted that said in the replies, oh no, he had valid points, but it's just because it's Saban. And at that point, I was like, so your point is, is that if you work in an industry, if you profit from an industry, you therefore cannot have an opinion about that industry. What are we doing here? Like, this is really what people are trying to put out there. You cannot have an opinion about an industry that you were in, an industry that is hurting. Everybody will sit there and act like everything's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pac-12 is gone. Four years ago, we had a power five. We have a power four now. And if you look at the way everything's being structured, we're racing towards a power two. But these same people want to say, no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. When a month ago, they were all the same ones clamoring that there were so much inequity in college football between the haves and the have-nots. Everybody thinks NIL has solved that. NIL hasn't solved that. Yes, NIL has given some teams a great opportunity to garner some attention their way. But the haves will inevitably still get theirs. Because at the end of the day, they have the deepest pockets. The NCAA didn't create anything out of equity or fairness. The NCAA created this out of self-preservation. Because they knew what the courts were going to do to them. They knew that Justice Kavanaugh had painted a target on their back and they were trying to self-preserve. This was not done in the best interest of the athlete. This was not done in the best interest of college football. And it was certainly not done in the best interest of equity. Because if it was done in the best interest of equity, you would not have allowed different states to do different things. But people aren't going to have that conversation because it doesn't fit into the narrative. Well, quite frankly, I don't care about people's narratives. I care about facts. I don't care if the facts go against my narrative. I care about facts. That's it. Period. And I saw people in the industry, and I don't mean lightly in the industry like myself. Like, I can't even say I'm in the industry. I exist. I'm lucky enough to talk into a mic, but I am in no way in the industry. I haven't made it there yet. When I say people in the industry, I mean people in the industry. Same people that were clamoring about FSU. Anything they can do to try and put dirt on the GOAT and on Alabama, that's what they're going to do. And then you see this, this notion of, oh, well, Alabama was paying players before NIL. Nobody has any proof of that. And furthermore, so was everybody. Now it's above the table, and it's worse than it ever was because the NCAA can't do anything. It is just ridiculous where we have gotten to. Nick says, hey, Ty, man, I just watched on three, and their crazy man said that he thinks Jalen Milrow is the quarterback for Bama, but he doesn't have the skill set. Uh, I, who said that, Nick? I'm very excited about Jalen Milrow. Caleb says, you're on Bleacher Report. I think you're in the industry. Maybe, maybe, Caleb. Um, I'm still, I'm just very, you know, rigid in my, in my view of like all of this. I think I'm in a gray area. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I'm lightly in the industry, but I haven't really made it yet. Hey, this should be, this should be tattooed somewhere on me. Free Reggie Bush, 100%. That's 100% true. People only what makes, it's ridiculous. No gray area, truth, the only constant. That's what, Willow, I don't care about a narrative. I don't care about a narrative. I care about what is real and let's go from there. Let's solve from there. But I'm not going to start my equation from some disingenuous position. I'm going to start my equation from what's factual and then we'll go from there. People have absolutely lost the plot 
in all of this. You were seeing people saying, oh, it's just Nick Saban saying this. Coach Prime said the same thing. Lane Kiffin said the same thing. Lane Kiffin just a few days ago said, oh, NIL has been great for us. Look at what we just signed. But in the same sentence acknowledged, it's not sustainable. So you have coaches saying, hey, yeah, like I just got all these talented players from this. Like it is working for me this year, but it's not sustainable. If that's coming from someone who just used your new system and used it very well, as did Ole Miss, using the transfer portal, using NIL, getting a bunch of talented players in here. That guy is saying that it's not sustainable. At what point are we going to just say, hey, forget who the messenger is. His message is legit. And it's not just coming from him. It's coming from coaches all over the place. And I guarantee Kirby Smart said the same thing. Thank you very much, Hacker. But you don't hear anybody saying anything about what Coach Prime said. You don't hear anybody saying anything about what Lane said, about what Kirby said. It's all about what Nick Saban said. You just had Chip Kelly leave UCLA to be an offensive coordinator because he was tired of dealing with it all. You have had college coaches jump to the NFL. And while, yes, that does make sense, jumping to the NFL, I find it more notable whenever a Chip Kelly leaves UCLA and is like, nah, I don't want to do this. 100%, Brian. Coach Prime said the same. But nobody's going to talk about Coach Prime when he said it. Because that doesn't fit the narrative. Everybody's narrative is that Nick Saban couldn't adapt. Which, listen, if, if Nick Saban couldn't adapt, which is still just a mind-numbingly stupid argument. Because these people in the industry that say Nick Saban couldn't adapt, you're essentially saying that Nick Saban at his worst is better than my coach at his best. How many national championships did he play in those last few years? How many wins did he get relative to how many losses? So Nick Saban at his worst is still better than your coach at his best. Got it. Cool. What are we doing here? This is unsustainable. It 100% is. It 100% is. Exactly, John. Exactly. It's all over the place. It's littered. Just dripping. And... People being disingenuous. Everything subsequent thing he has to adapt 100%. It's not the NIL is bad. It's the lack of regulate. 100% Kareem, 100%. I have no, and let me get this very clear. Thank you very much for this, Kareem, because it could, it could be interpreted that I'm against NIL. I'm not against NIL. I'm not against NIL. NIL is something that should have happened a long time ago. I've said this on my channel several times, and I'm going to say it over here. I was lucky enough when I was at the University of North Texas to know several members of the football team, to be able to be friends with several members of the football team, one of which was on the moot court team. Now, one thing that instantly drove me insane that, to me, just should not be legal is that I was on UNT's moot court team. UNT had a nationally ranked moot court team. The University of North Texas would pay to fly me from Dallas, Texas to Chicago or Orlando or California or Ohio. You name it. They're paying to fly me there. They're paying for my hotel. They're paying for my food. So it's all coming from the university. All the expenses are coming from the university. However, if a local high school in the DFW area was to hit me up and say, hey, we'd love to pay you for the weekend to come do a workshop with our debate team or with our moot congress team. We'd love you to come and speak to them and do a bit of coaching. We'll pay you. I could do that. That's perfectly legal. Now, I had a friend on the moot court team who also played for UNT's football team. He couldn't do that. He couldn't say, hey, I want to go put on a camp for kids and teach them how to be better blockers. He was an offensive lineman for UNT. He couldn't go out there and put on a camp to teach people and get paid a dollar a pop. But I could go out and do a speech and debate camp. I didn't give the University of North Texas near as much brand value as he did, but they allowed me to profit off of my name, image, and likeness, yet the football players couldn't. Doesn't make sense. 
once again, right? I, I live in a world where facts are where I start every argument I put together. And factually speaking, that doesn't make sense. So I am 100% for NIL. In fact, I want revenue sharing, if we're being honest. I want revenue sharing. I think that solves most of the issues. And I think Nick Saban hit the nail on the head. Why not do a revenue share? And if Gatorade wants to throw a million dollars to your quarterback for his NIL, let Gatorade throw him a million dollars. Who cares? That's his name, image, and likeness. But let's use NIL as NIL and revenue share. To me, that's the answer. That's the answer. I, it's, it's just, it's, I, I can't believe how many people are acting like what's going on in college football right now is not problematic. How they can take that position and in the same breath say we are for the longevity of college football, I don't understand. At the point where conferences are dying, everybody wants to act like this is fine. The Pac-12 is gone. Let that marinate for a second. Everybody wants to tell us that everything's fine and Nick Saban's being a boomer. Ask them where the Pac-12 is. Ask them where the ACC is heading. Okay? Because that right there shows you. College football is in a precarious position right now. And I am very hopeful that it will all work itself out. But I'm also not going to not acknowledge the problems in front of us right now. Let's talk about some recruiting, because if not, I'm going to get hot. I'm going to get hot. Blaze will make an appearance if we keep going down that one. And Blaze, this is a good family show. We don't need Blaze on here right now. Right? Saban had top one, two, and one recruiting classes during NIL. Exactly. Exactly. I heard something about a super conference with 60 teams and NIL money. Right? But everybody wants to act like everything's all good, as everything in college football is changing. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I think if I, my background in debate, ladies and gentlemen, is what makes the, this bother me so much. It, it's the fact that I see people out there getting paid. I don't know what these industry people are paying some of these guys. Some of these guys might be making six figures a year. And they are purposefully putting out disingenuous thought points. And I'm like, you're getting paid to be disingenuous and facetious. How? How is this where we are? I love a lot of things about the, the, the media industry. That's not one of them. The fact that everything is an arms race for clicks and it doesn't matter if the information is good. It doesn't matter if it starts positive discourse. Let's just say something inflammatory so that I get eyes on me. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous and it's counter to everything that I believe it should be. But that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. Let's talk about recruiting because I have some very... Very, I don't know, exciting news, but just news that I'm excited about. Recruits very interested in Alabama. You're talking Luke Metz. Love this kid's game. I said this yesterday, and uh, you know what? I want to go ahead and start the list, which I have right here. Every year, I go through 10 to 15 players that aren't four stars. that are three-star guys, and I, I pick them out, and I say, hey, this is a guy you need to know. You need to know this name. He might be a three-star now. He is not going to be a three-star for long. Luke Metz is the first of that name for the 2025 class, ladies and gentlemen. And I think he might end up in Alabama's class. Now, once again, you guys know, I don't necessarily have inside information. I like to try and read tea leaves. I, I like being a fanalist, right? Because I think that that's a beautiful bridge. Smook has got fantastic connections. He's really worked to cultivate that, and they've been doing great. I like sitting on the outside, right, and having those conversations with Smook because I think it makes for great content where you have someone who has those relationships, but then you have someone who's on the outside looking in, and you get to have that back-and-forth discourse, and I think that's part of the things that makes some of the content over here real special is that discourse. But... When it comes to Luke Metz, ladies and gentlemen, I got an interesting text. Oh, how long ago? A few weeks ago. I got an interesting text that hit my phone. Not from anybody in the Alabama sphere, either. This came from someone who is a 
content creator of another SEC program. He sends me a text out of the blue on a Friday, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. He says, sounds like Bama's flirting with Luke Metz. I hit him with, yeah, I'm interested in seeing how the new staff operates. He said, he said y'all snooping around with him right now, dude is big time. This is before he got the offer. And he went on to tell me he's very interested in Bama. Very interested in Bama. So this is someone who, the people that follow recruiting, the other content creators out there that follow recruiting, they know who Luke Metz is. And they're on their exact same list, like I said. The guy I, I just referenced, he does that same thing I do, where he makes a list of 10, 15, 20 guys that he's like, hey, watch this name. Luke Metz is the guy for him. So other fan bases are already aware of who this guy is. Very talented. Love him. You have Duke Johnson, right? Duke Johnson is a supremely gifted player. Making his decision at the end of this month is UGA recruiting Mets. You know, I don't know if he's gotten the Georgia offer, Shane. But I will say this. We know how this the uh, Georgia can operate. They could offer this weekend, next weekend. We'll see. We'll see. Wouldn't be shocked at all to see a Georgia offer come in if he doesn't already have one. Luke Metz is someone, if you talk, if you, no, not talk, I'm so sorry, I just read a comment that said talk. If you turn on the film, you're going to ask yourself, how is he a three-star? How? How is he not a four-star? Coach Smook saying he spoke with Metz last night. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about, guys. This is what makes this so beautiful, right? Smook working with his sources, hearing good things. But it's really good when I'm hearing from people outside of that, right? That are saying, hey, we think it's going in a very positive direction. That's interesting, right? That's interesting. Now we're hearing multiple different things from multiple different areas. And to me, that's always compelling. So love that. Alabama is also pushing for a Travis Smith Jr. Really want him in this class. Really want him in this class. Would love to see him as a wide receiver that ends up in it. You have Farrah Khan Jr. from the Woodlands, who is crystal ball to the University of Alabama. You have Caleb Cunningham, who Alabama is pushing for. Will you be able to lift him out of the state of Mississippi? We'll see. LSU also in that battle now. Very talented. Enjoyed his time there. You got a lot of different things happening in recruiting. You've got a lot of different things happening in recruiting. And I said this before, I'm going to say it again. Right now, the fear of missing out is running rampant in college football. Kids want to get down to Tuscaloosa. They want to see what this new staff is all about. Everybody knew what Alabama was under Nick Saban. All they know about what Alabama is under Kalen DeBoer is that this is a team that flipped Ryan Williams back, that flipped Antonio Coleman, that got Derek Smith, that got Zamir Smith. They want to see what this is about. They want to hear the pitch themselves. And that, to me, is powerful. The fact that you have generated that hype. Hype can be a very powerful thing, ladies and gentlemen. It depends how you mobilize it. And right now, Alabama is mobilizing it in a very powerful fashion, in a very positive fashion. But hype can be a very powerful and positive thing depending on how you utilize it. And right now, Alabama is doing a great job. And what do I mean when I say that just very quickly? People are excited. People have questions. They have that fear of missing out. What's the pitch? Right now, the hot thing to do is come to Alabama for a visit. Well, what's been happening when they get to Tuscaloosa for a visit? They're not wanting to leave. They're singing the praises of the new staff. And guess what that's doing? Every time one of these top recruits leave Tuscaloosa and they put that soundbite into existence that state, this was a dream visit. This was fantastic. It only goes to further the hype. It goes to further the FOMO. It's a great time right now. Recruiting is about to be great. AJ Williams says, where do you think this class ends up? Top three, top 10? For sure, top 10. For sure, top 10. Right? Top three is going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. But here's what I will say. This staff is going up against recruiters that have relationships that span back a year, two years, sometimes even longer. 
I think the staff is going to hit a top 10 class. I think they, they're going to push even for top five, right? I think it could be there. 2026, though. Once this staff has a year under their belt, they can now enter into a living room with familiarity. Oh, that's that's going to be different. So I do think top 10, AJ. I think top 10. Oh, I, and I feel very strongly about that. Alabama right now, if you look among the top 15 recruiting classes in the nation, uh, if you look at the top 15 recruiting classes in the nation, Alabama ranks fourth right now in average recruit rank. Very good. Caleb says, my Auburn friends were feeling good about landing Ryan Williams once they hired Charles Kelly. But now it's not a big deal because he recommitted because he was always going to Alabama. Caleb, this is the crazy thing. Auburn felt like they were going to flip him had Nick Saban not retired. And now they're saying they didn't. And I'm not saying they were. That's not my argument. I'm saying if you ask Auburn people, if we were to go back in time to December, Auburn felt like they were going to flip Ryan Williams anyways. But now all of a sudden it's, oh, he's always going to Bama. Okay. That copium sure does hit different, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? Beards and shenanigans says, feels like if DeBoer can land in the top 10, we will be fine. Top five might even be within reach. I agree, Beards. I agree. I agree 100% with that. And, and I will say this. If he lands top 10, top five his first year, it's only going to help his legitimacy going into year two. Uh, Sky is very, I mean, the, the trajectory is very, very positive. On three, number seven with five recruits, like four to five fewer than teams ranked above them. Exactly, Jared. Exactly. Exactly. So let's talk about Jalen Milrose's leadership as we're coming in here. It's coming down to the last nine minutes. Jalen Milrow, ladies and gentlemen, has continued to be the leader that he was last season. And that is huge. Alabama just went through a major phase of transition. And when you're going through phases of transition, if you can have someone or multiple someones be there to steady the ship through the night, that's huge. That's huge. Jalen Milrow, Tyler Booker, Jaden Roberts, Malachi Moore, Deontay Lawson, Jihad Campbell, all of these guys have been stabilizing factors. But Jalen Milrow is someone who you continue hearing about. You continue hearing that he's the first one in the facility. In fact, you just heard the other day that the coaches are very impressed with how he's getting this new offense, how he's understanding the intricacies of what's being asked of him. He's understanding what they want to do. He has got an infectious work ethic and an infectious attitude. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that's an amazing thing for Alabama. To have that quality of a leader right there, during this time of transition, it's powerful. It has no doubt helped. And it's certainly, I'm not claiming Jalen's the only one. I'm just saying he is one of the ones. Tyler Booker has been fantastic. Jaden Roberts has been fantastic. There's been a lot on this team that have stepped up to the plate. But Jalen Milrow is continuing his trajectory of letting everybody know, I will work to be viewed as the leader of this team. I won't say a word. I'll put my head down and let my actions do the talking. And I think that that ability to stabilize, that ability to be a beacon through all the uncertainty that Alabama had. Remember, whenever everybody was hitting the transfer portal, or that's what everybody would have had you believed, whenever everybody was supposed to hit the transfer portal, in walks Jalen Moore to the Mal Moore facility, looks at the reporters and yells, I'm not going anywhere roll tight, and walks in the building. He knew then what his job was. He knew what the role he needed to take was. Did he shy away from the moment? No. No, he embraced it. He knew what needed to happen, and he didn't hesitate. He embraced the opportunity. You know, I just got done watching The Sandlot the other night. And there was a quote in there, right? And it was talking about how greatness presents itself only a few times. And some people never have the recognition or the guts to take a hold of that greatness when it presents itself. Name me when Jalen Milrow hasn't had the guts to take a hold of the position, to take a hold of the opportunity. 
He hasn't shied away once. He has not minimized once. All he has ever done is rise to the occasion and take the opportunity that's given to him and run with it. Sandlot. Sandlot. And Goonies is good. Goonies, but the Sandlot, in my opinion, is goaded. That's goaded. That movie can do no wrong. It's goaded. Whenever Squints put the moves on Wendy Peppercorn, you already knew. That movie's goaded. Absolutely. Milrow equals Heisman. Love to see it. Love to see it. Has a first year ever head coach ever won a national championship in his first year? Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. That's a great question. Great question, Larry. And I'm very sorry. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. Caleb says, I think Larry Coker did it Miami. I may be wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm real sorry, Larry. I don't know the, uh, the answer to that off the top of my head, but I will look it up. I will try and find that. AJ Williams says, keep in mind, Milrow hasn't had any continuity. He's on his fourth offensive coordinator since he's been at Bama. I'm excited to see what he can do with an offensive-minded coach. 100%. 100%. Oh, no doubt about it, Steven. Goonies is a great movie. No, 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 no. My picking of the Sandlot is not to take away from the Goonies. The Goonies is great, but the Sandlot is goaded. Sandlot is goaded. Okay, so there was somebody, Coker. Then... Gotcha. Okay. There has been somebody. Did Les do it in his first year or was it his second? Let me see. Because I, I, for whatever reason, I thought Les did it in his second year. One national team. 2007. Okay, so he won it. Uh, was it? Okay, we have... I think it was the second. It was very soon. It was very soon. It, it, in either case, Dwight, it goes to prove the point, right? Like, that you, you can inherit a good thing and go win with it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Sandlot is among my all-time favorite movies, bro. Pure classic. It's unbelievable. The wife and I watched it, and I hadn't watched it in about 10 years. And I was sitting there thinking to myself, like, man, this holds up so well. Like this, this movie holds up so well. Not a not a moment of that movie you're not enjoying when you're watching it. Just a good movie, man. Just a good feel good movie. Jimmy Johnson. Okay, so hey, in his first with Nick Erickson, Urban. Okay, so we do have some people. This is all before I was born. You guys gotta remember, I'm I'm a I'm I'm young, I'm young, I'm not that young, but I'm young. They had a bull ban, so yeah, there there have been some, but some of those may have come from even before I was born. So we'll see, but love the leadership the Jalen Milrose exhibiting. Let's head into some chat talk, right? We're at the end of the show. We're gonna. I think Coach Debo will shock the world with this on-field and recruiting. Completely agree. Completely agree. Michael says, Bama has an edge. DeBoer has a different offensive scheme. Perhaps the SEC is not used to. And you know, Michael, there is something to this. There is something to a new offensive scheme introducing itself to the SEC. Now, granted, I think that offense as a whole has come a long way. And I think defenses are more accustomed to stopping spread out offenses or offenses more akin to what DeBoer was running. But, but that being said, he's a brilliant offensive mind. He is one of the most dangerous offensive minds in the country for a reason. AJ says, Bama makes it to the semifinals at the very least. Book it. Love to see it. Moon Rocket says, yeah, Jimmy Johnson was the only guy who left. Was the gym was the guy who left for Coker, but only Larry Coker has done it in year one tie. Good stuff, guys. This is why the undefeated is undefeated. This is why the undefeated is undefeated. That's a great fact. Oh, Erickson, too. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Robert. I just looked up and saw this. Dennis Erickson and Larry Coker at Miami at the tail end of the Miami Miami Dynasty. That's awesome. Thank you very much for that, Robert. Thank you very much for that, Moon, and everybody else who contributed to that. That's really interesting. I did not know that. 
Good morning, Todd. Happy you're in here with us. So for Alabama, we highlighted Jalen Milrose's leadership, ladies and gentlemen. But the one thing I want you all to remember, the one thing I'm going to leave you all with today is this. The leadership is not just relegated to Jalen Milrow. You have Tyler Booker. You have Jaden Roberts. You have all the guys that stayed on defense. You have Malachi Moore. You've got leaders on this team. And if anything, I think that the leadership on this team will be stronger than teams we've seen the previous few years because they have been bonded through what they have gone through, through everybody leaving, through every question that's been asked of them, they have been bonded by it. I think the leadership is going to be as good on this as good on this Alabama team as any Alabama team we've seen in a long time. Yeah, I'm good for whatever, coach. We'll hop in here. We're good to start chopping it up. Read somewhere Walmack say Coach KD was the best offensive mind in college football in second place. Yeah, he did. He did say that, case spray. I said it first, Brian. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, the undefeated, y'all are on it. Y'all are on it. Nothing gets by y'all. I read, Yeah, we talked about that. In 1948, don't count. Too close to World War II. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson. Okay, we talked about that one. Bama championship or not, it's still 97% more relevant than most. 100%. Ty, better offensive mind, Coach KD or Lincoln Riley? I'm going to go with Coach Kalen DeBoer, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why right now. Because, in my opinion, I think Coach Kalen DeBoer is more thorough in his offense. Right? Like, I think whenever you look at Coach Kalen DeBoer, he, don't get me wrong, Lincoln's a brilliant offensive mind. This is not to take away from Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley is a brilliant offensive mind, right? You're not going to hear me say otherwise. But when I say DeBoer has more depth to it, I mean DeBoer is hitting you from everywhere. DeBoer almost reminds me, y'all know, y'all know that uh, I love combat sports, right? I love combat sports. So I'm going to liken DeBoer to a UFC fighter right now in terms of how he can attack. How many of you guys in here first off watch UFC? How many of you are big fight fans in here? Because this, this comparison might not land. But for those of you that know, you might know. Whenever I watch DeBoer and his offense, it reminds me of O'Malley. And let me explain. Sean O'Malley is someone who can hit you and put offense on you in any way. If you're pressing O'Malley, he can teep you. He can hit you with the straight. He can hit you with the uppercut. He can hit you with the knee. He hit Cheeto Vera with a knee that should have sent him into another dimension. How he didn't get sent into another dimension is beyond me. That's neither here nor there. But it's the ability to get offense off in every single way. With Sean O'Malley, you have to worry about the fists. You have to worry about the elbows. You have to worry about the knees. You have to worry about shoulder checks. You got to worry about the feet. There's not one thing that you can sleep on. There's not one aspect of that offense that he won't use to hurt you. That's Kalen DeBoer, in my opinion. When I watch Washington's offense, what I see is a guy that is willing to use every single bit of his offense and remain flexible to get the job done. That's why I say, listen, there are other guys. So you talk about an Adesanya, unbelievable striking, glory kickboxing champion, but Adesanya isn't going to put off the same offense as is a Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley can hit you moving backwards, forwards, and side to side. He can put off offense in any way possible. That's how I like in Kalen DeBoer. Everything is at his disposal, and he can do a lot of different things. He's also versatile. I talked about this. The first year he got to Washington, he had a bit more of a running back by committee room, right? But whenever he got Dylan Johnson, Dylan Johnson had 100 more carries than the leading rusher did the year before, meaning he will adapt his offensive system to the players he has. 
So I think Kalen DeBoer, yeah, I'd put him over Lincoln. I'd put him over Lincoln. And I, I hope that analogy landed, right? Like it's Coach KD, John Jones. John Jones is the greatest ever. I 100% agree with you there. I 100% agree with you there. But in terms of like danger, it, to me, it's very akin to like the way with Sean O'Malley, everything is on the table. Everything's on the table. You can't sleep on anything. And furthermore, whenever Kalen DeBoer uses his pre-snap motions, teams have to recognize it. It's the exact same way when Sean O'Malley hits you with a feint. You've seen other fighters in the cage or in boxing, you know, they'll hit you with the feint, maybe a little shoulder check or throw the right out there just a little bit just to get you thinking. And it doesn't draw a reaction from the opponent. Sean's going to draw a reaction from you. Why? Because he's going to throw that strike. If you watch Sean O'Malley, he always does these head fakes, right? Where he'll be right in front of you, da -da -da -da, getting off his offense, and then he's going to do the head fake. How many times have you seen that, the, the spinning head fake? The reason why he does that is because you genuinely don't know if he's going to throw a spinning heel kick. And he will throw a spinning heel kick. So every time he head fakes, you have to wonder, is the spinning heel kick coming right after? Am I going to get my head taken off? That's why I say Sean O'Malley, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not just offense coming from every where, but it's also the way he'll set up the play before it ever is hiked. The pre-snap motion, it's akin to the feints. It's giving the defense something to think about. And you see pre-snap motion from other teams. But if they don't utilize it, if they don't make it a threat, it just remains a decoy. Kalen DeBoer makes it a threat. Therefore, everything must be accounted for. Everything. That's just the way my brain, um, you know. Ooh, this is a good one. Ty, do you think DeBoer is a better play caller than Lane and Sark? I need to see it, but I think he could be. So I I put him right up there with both, but I might put him above Lane, Lynn. And this is why I might put him above Lane. And I love Lane. I love Lane Kiffin. Sometimes Lane Kiffin, in my opinion, coaches like he's trying to prove a point as opposed to trying to win. Kalen DeBoer coaches to win, right? It, it sometimes will look to me like Lane Kiffin will think to himself, this offensive game plan, the, the Alabama game this past year is a great example. It looked to me like he thought he had a game plan that was really going to take advantage of Alabama's defense, and it didn't. And instead of switching it up, he just kept spamming the same thing over and over and over again. And at the end of it, you're just like, Lane, you're one of the most brilliant offensive minds in the nation, but you coached with pride as opposed to coaching to win. So I think it might be the stylistic approach that I give DeBoer over Lane. Right? I think it's the stylistic approach. I I've always viewed Sark and Lane as somewhat analogous, but Sark was the more buttoned up version. Right, Sark is a bit more buttoned up. He's got the the briefcase with him. I think DeBoer's cut from more of the more buttoned up cloth, where he's like, "Hey, I got a lot of stuff, but I'm interested in winning." Hundred percent hacker, a hundred percent. And that's the thing. I love Lane Kiffin. I don't want anybody to think like I really do like Lane Kiffin. I think he's great for the SEC. I think he is fantastic for the SEC because he trolls. And I'm here for that, right? Like, I think it's hilarious. But, but, Kalen DeBoer is, the, is every bit of an offensive mind as they are. And I just think that he's more buttoned up than Lane. Now, Sark is an interesting one because when Sark is in his bag, Sark can call a beautiful game. A beautiful game. Shane Brown says, Ty, better quarterback whisperer, Coach KD or Riley? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. It's tough to answer this, Shane, because of Riley's body of work. Right? Like, even if I think that DeBoer is an unbelievable quarterback developer, Riley has how many Heismans under his belt at the quarterback position? How many number one picks under his belt at the quarterback position? 
right? Like it's it's just one of those where like even if I think Kalen DeBoer is every bit of the quarterback whisperer that Lincoln Riley is, Lincoln Riley has the hardware. And no, 100%, John, who has the better record uh, head up? I think he's a better coach. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. But that's a good question, Shane. I think he's every bit the quarterback developer that Riley has been, right? It's not that I think that Riley's just a better quarterback whisperer than is Kalen DeBoer. I think that they're both incredible. But man, Riley's got all that hardware. You know what I mean? And it's also tough because whenever Jalen Hurts was in his situation, what did Nick Saban tell Jalen Hurts? He specifically told him, go OU for Lincoln Riley. He said, where are they developing quarterbacks? Go there. Um, but that being said, like Kalen DeBoer, what he did with Michael Penix, it's incredible. I think Kalen DeBoer is an unbelievable quarterback coach. That's a tough question. That's a really tough question. I think that they're, I think they're neck and neck if I'm being honest. It's just Lincoln has the hardware. He's just been doing it on the big stage for a bit longer. That's a great question. That's a great question. That's a really good one. I like that. If you're asking, I, I give KD the better offensive mind. I think his offenses, I like his offenses better than I like Lincoln's offenses. And I like Lincoln's offenses. That's his great offensive mind. Adam says, just tuned in. Should we be worried about Gillespie to Ohio State? Not in my opinion, Adam, but once again, I have no inside knowledge. I'm just giving my opinion. Gillespie didn't want to move to Georgia, right? Like, he wasn't interested in taking the Georgia job. He just got a, a big pay raise. Just got a big pay raise. The, the only team that I would be worried about if they offered, if they – let's say it was like an offensive coordinator position is Florida because that's his alma mater, right? But if you look, he's got ties to the SEC. He's got ties to the SEC. He's from SEC territory. He played his college ball in SEC territory. His first coaching gig was in SEC territory. He's only had a few coaching gigs not in SEC territory. He was at North Carolina, which is ACC, but like, he started at South Carolina, then Tennessee. You know, he's been to Oklahoma State, West Virginia, North Carolina, not SEC. But I just, yeah, I, I, I think that he's good. I think he's good. I think Gillespie will be staying. I think that he got a big pay raise. I think that he likes where he's at. DeBoer has made it known that he values Gillespie, right? Like he retained Roach and Gillespie, and he has sang their praises, so I think they're good. Oh, 100%, Brian. At the point where we're having these conversations, that's really the answer, right? Like, at the point, Kalen DeBoer is, he's up there with the best offensive minds in the game. And like I said, Brian, I put him over Lincoln. And that might sound blasphemous, but I do. I do. Like, I put him up there as a top offensive mind in college football. But I will also say this. I watched a lot of Washington over the past two years. So I have been very biased in favor of DeBoer. In fact, Hacker Music, if Hacker is still here, because Hacker has been around my channel, I mean, goodness gracious, guys. I think Hacker was the first thousand, like one of the first thousand subscribers I had on my channel. He might even be a first like 750 or 500 subscribers on my channel. He's been around giving me support forever. Hacker, if you're still in here, you may remember when Michael Penix didn't make it to New York, not this past season, but the year before, I was irate. I did a whole live basically being like, they just robbed Michael Penix of going to New York. They don't know what they're doing. That offense with DeBoer, with Michael Penix, is one of the most dangerous things in all of college football, and this is ridiculous. I've been watching Washington since DeBoer got there. Closely. That's why whenever DeBoer was named the head coach, I was instantly just like, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is an absolute win, because I've been watching what you've been doing at Washington. I've been fascinated by Michael Penix. 
right? I've been fascinated by Michael Penix and the way that they're doing all of this. Fantastic win. Fantastic win for Alabama getting Kalen DeBoer. And then the staff he brings in. Sounds like I, I think this offense is going to score, man. I do. I do, Larry. And that's the thing. When I watch this Washington offense, there's so much. There's so many different ways Kalen DeBoer will hurt an opponent. And I just can't wait to see it in Crimson. Big up to Hacker for being an early adopter. Yeah, he was there. He was there real early. Real, real early. So Co Coach Kalen DeBoer is absolutely up there, guys. Among the best in the nation. You just don't have too many other people out there that are able to put together offensive game plans the same way he is. And, <coughs> I apologize. And, the other thing I'll say is this. We know what Coach Kalen DeBoer brings to the table. There's another name on this Alabama staff that I'm really interested in, that I'm really excited about. It's an offensive mind, and I think he is a young, up-and-coming offensive mind in college football. And if you have something to write down, right, remember this, Brian Ellis. I think Alabama has stumbled upon something in Brian Ellis. I think this is a name that if Alabama can hold on to, if Alabama has a great year, Nick Sheridan may be getting a call for, you know, some big positions. If Nick Sheridan moves on and Alabama is in need of an offensive coordinator or an offensive-minded head coach, Brian Ellis, obviously Shepard is the guy, right? Shepard would become the offensive coordinator. But Brian Ellis is the name that I would watch to slot in and start almost being taught the ropes from there on out. I got to say Riley for that very reason. Type. Fair. That's fair. He don't see it like we do, Moon. Why not? I got to talk to Smook about Ellis because I'm excited for Ellis, man. You you, you start doing some research into Ellis. He was up there at Western Kentucky with Bailey Zapp when Bailey Zapp was breaking all those records. He was the passing game coordinator. Everywhere he's been, his offense is like if, if his hand is in the offense, it's getting better. It's getting better. I'm really excited about Brian Ellis. Really, really excited about him. He's young. He's energetic. Uh, interesting to see what he's going to be able to put down, put forward. Three touchdowns per half ain't nothing to Debo. These horses, yeah. Hacker says, I remember I'm listening but can't comment much because I'm babysitting a three-year-old. All good. All good. Smook, pop in, please. He's uh, whatever he gets in here. We'll we'll have that conversation. I'll ask him. I'll ask him because listen, I might be wrong. I'm not claiming to be right. He could have something that you know. I'm like, oh, that's a good point. But I just I think that Bama found something in Brian Ellis. I think Bama found something in Brian Ellis. Everywhere he's gone, I mean, you you have really good offenses. Let's let's look at him real fast. So, he came from Georgia Southern. Um, he pulled the strings to a top 30 passing offense and completion percentage offense last season. Additionally, and this is coming from, let me make sure I source this correctly. This is from SI.com by Hunter DeSiever. Hunter DeSiever. I apologize if I mispronounced your name, but I do want to give credit where credit is due. Great article. Um, so let's, let's go through this. So he put together a top offense this past year. Additionally, as the co-offensive coordinator at Western Kentucky from 2019 to 2021, Ellis developed a team that scored over 44 points per game in his final season there. These new additions have been a bit more of a transaction. It doesn't go too, too much. Let's see if I can't uh, figure out find a uh, article that really goes through does football scoop have something because that'd be sick i 
Okay. So Ellis was also the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach from during the 2020 and 2019 seasons when we talked about uh, his former stop. In 2020, graduate transfer quarterback Pig Rome started 10 games for the Hilltoppers and set the program's all-time record with 279 consecutive pass attempts without an interception, surpassing Brandon Daughtry's mark of 176 that spanned across the 2013 and 14 seasons. In 2019, Ellis helped the Hilltoppers improve their offensive production from the year prior in almost every category. Western Kentucky increased their points per game by 4.3 and scored eight more touchdowns than in 2018. The Hilltoppers passing offense upped their totals to 259.3 yards per game and 20 touchdowns while completing 67% of their passes. He's also the guy that worked with JT Daniels. Right. Oh, a B minus isn't terrible, Moon. A B minus isn't terrible. B minus isn't terrible, but I I, I like him. But a B minus isn't the worst, right? I think it's just because he's young. I think that's pretty much well it. But he did work with JT Daniels, his JT Daniels true freshman year, right? If we look at more recently, 2023, the Eagles were once again a high-flying offense as they finished in the top 30 nationally in completion percentage and passing offense. In 2022, was a record-breaking one for Ellis as he transformed the Eagle offense into an aerial threat. Georgia Southern broke just about every passing record under all-conference quarterback Kyle Vantries, who finished the year with 4,253 passing yards and 27 touchdowns. Three receivers had over 700 yards apiece, and the ground game churned out 23 touchdowns. I mean, he's putting together some offenses. And he's putting together some offenses now. Listen, listen, I, I, I like him. I think he's a young star. I'm like you. I think he's a young star. I think he's very exciting. I think him under... Now, here's what really excites me, Moon. Here's what really excites me. So we just went through everything Brian Ellis, right? Sounded great. It was fantastic. Now I want you to imagine, now he's going to be doing all of this under Kalen DeBoer's tutelage. So all that praise I was just giving Kalen DeBoer whenever you guys were asking, hey, Lincoln Riley or Kalen DeBoer. Lane Kippen or Kalen DeBoer. So now, one of the young up-and-coming offensive minds in college football is being paired with one of the best offensive minds in all of football. I like that. I like that a lot. And not only that, man, he's working with Shepard, too. So he gets to be around DeBoer. He gets to be around Shepard. He gets to be around Gillespie. He gets to be around Nick Sheridan. I mean, he is around an incredible collection. We're talking about Brian Ellis, KT. Uh, tight end coach for Alabama. Really excited about him. Really excited. Janet, thank you for coming in here with us this morning. Thank you for coming in here and hanging out with us this morning. Happy to see you. Hope you're having a good day on this Thursday. So yeah, Brian Ellis, I mean, you look at what he's done already, and now he's going to be under the tutelage of Kalen DeBoer, of all of these offensive minds. Very excited about that hire. Really excited about Brian Ellis. I can get him being young, though, but I, I just think that, like, he could be a name to keep your eye on. I'm going to be watching him for sure. Good to see you too. Oh, thank you very much, Janet. When Eagles were balling before biggest drop off in, in the history of. True. That was, I mean, I, to be fair, I don't really like, I didn't watch a bunch of uh, the Eagles. Todd says, yeah, I like Brian Ellis's background and trajectory. As do I, man. As do I. I think he's a very, very promising coach. I think he's got a lot of promising attributes to him. I think youth helps. And you saw his passing attacks are, they're dangerous. Oh, uh, Bama Jeff, don't say this, man. Bama Jeff says, I love that. Grooming him to be the next because uh, we know Sheridan and Shep are future head coaches. Don't, don't say that about Sheridan and Shepard, even though I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you, but I I can't I can't think about losing Coach Shepard. 
You, but but also in fairness, everybody in the undefeated, you know how I felt about the Shepherd hire since it came down the pipe, right? I was like, okay, we got Kalen DeBoer. Is he bringing Shepherd? Honestly, I care more about him bringing Shepherd than I care about him bringing Grub. And at the point where I was like, yeah, he's bringing Shepherd, I was like, we ball. Bring Grub, that's awesome. I'd love to have, but like we ball. I don't care. We got Sh we got Coach Shepherd. I don't care. We're good to go. We're rolling. Nicholas says, I think it's because I have a VPN. It's not letting me stay as a member. I don't know. I don't know anything about that, Nicholas. I'm not the best when it comes to the back end stuff. I'm worried about Galep's speed to Ohio State as well. Just don't think he wants to shovel snow. Oh, I think you mean, you're not worried. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> Michigan, it's okay, guys. I have no doubt Ohio State will call Gillespie. Why wouldn't they call Gillespie? He's one of the best running back coaches in the nation. They'll call Gillespie, and I think he'll be like, uh, no, thank you. He just has so many ties to the SEC, and it's a brand new venture, right? Like, you think about this right here. You think about all the success a Alabama has had, right? Now I want you to imagine you're Gillespie. You're like, no, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here two years. I'm going to stay here two years. If Alabama continues to have success, like your stock, which is already real high for Robert Gillespie, his stock is already real high in the industry. If he continues just balling as a coach the way we know he's going to, in two to three years, his stock is going to be double what it is now. Like, you you bet. Watch. You watch. He keeps up the, his trajectory. His stock is going to double in a few years. No doubt. No doubt. And I'll tell you this right here. If Florida needs an offensive coordinator, they might try in a few years. He's from Florida. Or not from Florida. He's from Mississippi. He played at Florida from 98 to 2001. Um, but no, I'm not... Ohio State, like, don't get me wrong. It's one of those in, It's one of those institutions where it's just like, okay, it's one of those. And when I say one of those, I'm talking like, imagine you're an Oklahoma State fan. And you're like, oh, well, all these people are trying to poach our coach. And you're like, oh, I think he stays. I think he stays. If Bama, Ohio State show up to the party, you're like, oh, they're here. He's gone, right? Like, he's not staying here when they're here. Luckily for Bama, you're also one of those schools, right? So it's it's much harder to have someone lifted from you when you're when you're one of those schools too that like you just knock. What does Walter White say? I am the one who knocks. That's that's Bama. Right? That's Bama. Bama is the one who knocks. It's a reason DeBoer gave those titles to assistant coaches. The buyout is probably a poison pill tie. Great, 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 great point. Great point, Jermaine. Great point. I didn't even think about buyout. I didn't even, th I was just thinking about this from more of like a, I won't say surface level, because I don't think that's the right word, because we were looking at it fairly in depth. It wasn't surface level. I don't know the right word, but I, I wasn't thinking about it from the perspective of a buyout. But that's a fantastic point, Jermaine. Thank you very much for that, because that only adds on to it. And really, that is the point to make. Thank you very much for that, Jermaine. Great point. Lynn says, Florida is going to need a head coach real soon if he has another year like last year. Lynn, I'm going to even double that up, my man. Have you seen Florida's schedule? Yeah, Hacker <laughs> says, with Florida's schedule, it's a bad year to be on the hot seat. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. That Florida schedule, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. They play nine ranked teams. It's they go through a stretch of the season that I'm looking at and I'm like, oh my word. That's messed up. I don't know who agreed to this, but I'm gonna be tuned in. Couple media outlets are reporting that Gillespie is the front runner for the running. Now, Brian, here's my uh, here's my question on this. Is it that that's Ohio State's preferred choice or that Gillespie is like, because I, I don't doubt that that's Ohio State's preferred choice. Heck, if I was Ryan Day, 
Robert Gillespie would be my first call. All right, if I was Ohio State, if I was Ryan Day, Robert Gillespie would be my first call. I'd hit him up and be like, hey, what's it looking like? What's all it because we'd love to have you. I just don't think it's going to happen. But I've been wrong before, right? I'm just here giving my opinion. I've been wrong before. I just don't think it's going to happen. I think he's staying. I'm not really worried about it. You have to, the sked bus you, <laughs> buys you a year. So I, I'm, I'm like you, Jared, you would think that the schedule buys you a year, but man, I don't know. <laughs> the other thing with Billy Napier that I think is interesting, right? And it really does tell the full story. So think about this coach Smook, my man. What's think up, Brody? About this. Think about this. Whenever we talk about Billy Napier, think about every other rebuild you've seen. Brent Venables, he gets to Oklahoma. He instantly hits the transfer portal. Coach Prime, he gets to Colorado, instantly hits the transfer portal, and they hit the ground. Billy Napier inherited the team, played with that team for a year, and then in year two started the rebuild. I think he was doing so, and Coach, correct me if you think I'm wrong, I think he was doing so to try and have a position to argue on where he could look at the Florida administration and say, whoa, 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 whoa. We're in year three, but I, I I did my year my rebuild a year later. I wanted to have faith in the young men that were already here. It didn't work out. Give me a little bit more time. Personally, I felt like that was kind of one of the reasons why you would do your rear or your rebuild in year two to give yourself more of a cushion to remain around the program. That way, you had an argument of hey, we were never going to win a national championship in year three because I'm starting the rebuild. Like. I don't know. That's just the way I've looked at it. But Florida has got a brutal schedule. What do you think, Coach? I, I'm right there with you, man. And I, I like to troll the Florida fans and everything. But at the end of the day, man, they <laughs> they were they were fighting an uphill battle from the jump, man. They were fighting an uphill battle once they hired Billy Napier. And I think Billy Napier is a good coach. Um, I, I think he's more of a uh, I think he's more of a coordinator. I think he would be a great coordinator, right? Agreed. If that was his. But um, as a head coach in this in this stage on this level, I think he's doing what he can right now. This this team was in shambles, you know, um, and it's 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 not a it's not a hidden fact. This this Florida team to be in a lot of games that they were in the past two years, that's just a testament to the quality of a coach that they have, in my opinion. Um, and not saying he's great or anything, top five, but he he is a quality coach, um, and. We know what Florida traditionally does with their staff and how they hire people and how hard it is to get into their university for players. You know, so he's he's doing his, his the best he can. And he's not having a lot of resources and support to work with. I mean, it seems like the last two coaches that have came through Florida were destined to, to get fired. It's like they're wasting money. They're patching, making patch uh, hires and don't really have a, a, a strong target in, in sight. It's, and. and Part part and reason it just doesn't look attractive right now to be coaching at Florida. That's 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 a big reason. So I think yeah, he's doing decent for what he's got to work with. And you look at it, he inherited a team that came from a coach who said, and I quote, I'll worry about recruiting when the season is over. Exactly. Whenever he said that, I dropped my head and I was like, I'm not a Florida fan, but I feel for Florida fans. You just said what? You're going up against Nick Saban and Kirby Smart, but you're saying you want to chill out on working on recruiting? Nick Saban ain't That's chilling crazy. out on that. Kirby ain't chilling out on that. That's crazy. I, I guarantee you, Snook, how much do you want to bet that whenever he said that, Coach Saban assembled the staff. Kirby assembled the staff and say, go to everybody they've offered and double down now. Yep, right now. And and you know what? I was telling Florida fans this um, probably like maybe like four months into um, Napier being hired. I was like, y'all happy about Napier. I, I understand. But let's be realistic. What is he coming into? What is he having to make up for? What is he going to have to clean up, erase, and try to make better? You know, before it even starts to activate. See, Kalen DeBoer is coming into a situation where the culture is less win recruiting. You get what I'm saying? That's where it starts. So feeling that energy he's reinforcing and the, the, the aggressiveness that he's reinforcing it with, that's reassuring. You look at what Florida was doing, you literally just had the head coach saying, like you just said, it doesn't matter. We'll get the recruiting after the season. Well, 
<laughs> how many you, you're telling kids to show up and you're not giving them no attention during the season when they come in to visit and see what your program is about you leave you're leaving that to your your assistants right who really don't have control of the program they're following your guidance so they're sitting around there you know throwing out wishful nothings right giving these guarantees of of vision and future that they don't even have a, a good concept of themselves of because they're not getting any directives from the leader so it's kind of a, a backward, uh, a, what they call it, a, a, a backward situation right yeah. here. So, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's, it's one of those things, man. You just kind of you kind of laugh at it, and you, but you you feel for Napier, especially with the schedule. I know you was talking about the schedule. Oh, my, oh my God. Like, bro, it's, I feel Every time you look it. at it, it gets worse. <laughs> Like, especially when you look at uh, you you, you look at the 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 way that teams are recruiting. Like, man, uh, I it's sad, bro. I don't even. I I hate I hate talking about Florida schedule this year because it's not fair. It's not fair. I'm 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 gonna be the first one to say <laughs> it's, it's not fair <laughs> to Florida fans. I'm sorry, uh, Bama fans. Y'all might hate me for saying it, no, but it is not fair for what they do in the Florida. And I would be happy if Florida came out with seven eight wins i will be happy because then that shows you that the sec is still competitive right but right now with this schedule oh my god what's up kt what's up everybody in the chat <laughs> yeah no it's it's absolutely wild the schedule they have and you know i've often said there are two coaches in florida i think could be on the hot seat right now and i think this year is going to be big for two different reasons you have Cristobal out there at Miami and he's got a cakewalk of a schedule but if he doesn't dominate that schedule I worry about his future coach we look at Cristobal he inherited Tyler Van Dyke who was renowned as one of the top returning quarterbacks certainly in the ACC but certainly one of the young quarterbacks to watch dare I say he regressed under Mario's watchful eye Right, oh, like tremendously, man. You got to remember, Tyler Van Dyke was a quarterback that we were going to go after coming into this this last season with the Miro Buckner. I mean, before Buckner got there, the Miro Simpson saga, like Van Dyke was one of the guys that if if he showed interest, we were going to we were going to go after him. And it was realistic. I'm I'm glad we didn't because honestly, you know, Miro the pro, the Miro project is is not even 50% done. That's the scary part. He led us to the playoffs, and he was only like, he only progressed. If you had to scale him from 0 to 100, he started the season probably at 10, and he ended the season at like 45, 50, right? Now you're giving him a competent coaching with a competent scheme, a scheme that fits any quarterback that can pick up the basics of what you need to read. Man, this is going to be crazy. And, and you're talking about, man, <laughs> Imagine if imagine if we had Tyler Van Dyke come, you know, coming into this season. I mean, we a lot of people would be more solidified and, and happier, but that just goes to show you when how much more coaching matters when it comes to development. I heard you talk about Lincoln Riley. I can't give Lincoln Riley credit for developing quarterbacks. He's been every quarterback that you named that's went from Oklahoma or under Lincoln Riley's uh uh tutelage, he's been handed that quarterback from somebody else. He's never really developed a quarterback. The offense fits. He he. I mean, he knows how to scheme an offense around his quarterbacks, but he's had an innate ability to get already pre, you know, on the way up, uprising guys who got experience, got eyes for the game. The speed of the game is adjusted. You you have yet to see him bring in a true freshman quarterback and make him a top five pick. I mean, am I am I missing somewhere? Did I miss somebody? Like. I don't disagree, but here's what I will say. At the point where even Nick Saban told Jalen Hurts, go where they develop quarterbacks, OU, yeah. he knew, right? Like, you even have the GOAT being like, hey, that guy right there, he's he's doing something with quarterbacks. I'd go talk to him. But I do think nice. you're certainly right, right? When you look, he had Baker Mayfield come in, um, yeah. and Baker Mayfield was a transfer. He had Kyler Murray, who – Kyler Murray was fantastic in terms of his talent, wasn't used right at AM. Kevin Sumlin, for whatever reason, did not want to utilize him there. Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams was very raw. Right. Right. Like coming out of high school, Caleb Williams was very, very raw. Um, but once again, to your point, his upside was tremendous, right? Like he could make things happen because he was such an incredible athlete. So no, I, I don't think you're totally like misplaced there, right? Mm, not not see, because he has had great ones. 
And and see, this is what I'm saying. Y'all are talking about look what he did with Hertz. Hertz was being developed behind two of that second year. He just didn't get it. When he got his opportunity, he was already showcasing. He just rolled into a, a coordinator that was like, okay, this is the type of talent I can deal with. Let me go ahead and put it in action. And the offensive play style, the play calling style fit Jalen Hurts' skill set. And you see the next year it turned around. And I think it was uh, who came after Hertz for that year? It wasn't Spencer. Caleb Williams. It was Spencer Rattler. You look what happened with Spencer Rattler. His first opportunity to develop a freshman, right? Spencer's first- also a bit of a, a bit of an interesting case because if Spencer wanted to like use pride, yes, uh, that's what he that got too. pulled for. But that's part of being able to develop a quarterback. Ty, that's what I'm saying. Like you got to be developing a quarterback ain't just on the field. It's mentality too, because that's what was dealing with. We're talking about Jalen Miro last year. It was more mentality. It wasn't the skill set. It was the mentality of how he saw the field, of how he wanted to do things in this in the phase of the offense. So that's where I'm real critical of Lincoln. Not taking anything away from him. He's gotten quarterbacks and taking them to the next level. But as far as fully developing, I haven't seen him develop a quarterback like Steve Sarkeesian did. I haven't seen him develop a quarterback like Lane Kiffin did. I haven't seen him develop a quarterback like I can even go back to like Mac Brown. Mac Brown was developing quarterbacks, setting staffs in place to, to develop quarterbacks. You know, uh, who else? Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll at USC. I mean, he had a nice stint. It was just. Sark I like, but Sark also got gifted a quarterback that was given true. a perfect one rating, and he's having to come back for his what year? Yeah. In Quinn? Seventh. Seventh. Right? So, like, that, <laughs> like Quinn right. hasn't exactly. So, But no, you, you know what, coach? You, you listen, you, you, you. You are right, right? Like, he's he's certainly had great quarterbacks to work with. And I do agree, right? Because this yeah. is one thing that people miss. Jalen Hurts' best throw, in my opinion, of his college career actually came against Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. It was a touchdown to Jerry Judy. I don't know if y'all remember this. It was the year where he was behind Tua, but he threw a beautiful back shoulder fade. And Judy you, was I, running, and he just did this. And the ball yeah. fell right in his it. hands. And that, but that was his early stages of understanding what being a quarterback, how to process things on the field, and that was all under. Uh, uh, was it Sarkeesian that year? No, was uh, it Enos. Lane? Enos, Dan Enos. But who's who's the OC that year? That was was it the ball? Was it Dayball? Brian Dayball? From, to his first year starting, to it and a half playing his first year. I. Th- he might have had Lane no, his first no, year, but his second right, year, I think it was DeBall. Yeah, because Jalen had two, had Lane the first two years. Jalen had Lane the first year, first two years. Oh, man, you know what? That's crazy. I didn't even – I'm running those two guys back, like, because Kiffin, Kiffin left early, right? Sarkeesian had to step in for the playoffs. That's when we lost, and right? And he went off to – And then he went off, and then we had to have DeBall come in. Or was it Loxley? See, I got to go Ooh, back. No, y'all no, gotta, no, y'all no, gotta no, run it, it back. Was Lock. It See? was Loxley. It was, it was Loxley. And that goes to show you the turnover rate and how successful we were bringing in quarterback developers or offensive play calls. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it just fell off once we got uh, Bill O'Brien. Like, it's just dramatic. We forgot about everybody else that came before him that was sustaining. And th- during those times, our defense wasn't great every year either. We had subpar mediocre defense uh, performance with Pete Golden being there. You know, Tosh Lapore did what he could for the two years. We we get what we gave him a year, two years as as a DC. Like we just had so much turnover. That just goes to show you, man. Like development is key at this level. And it, transfer portal kind of took away from having to develop guys because now you can get a guy that went somewhere and played six games and went through the rough patches and got replaced. Now he leaves. He comes with a little bit more sense and a little more a little more comments. And you got real trajectory of where he's at at the college level instead of trying to develop from the high school level through that process and then building on that. So, I mean, it can go both ways, both to me, both sides of the argument are true. You know, you, you can't have everything. Like you always say, you can't, can't have both sides being right, but there are certain aspects of it depending on the viewpoint. You can say, okay, that's valid. That's valid. And like with that debate, Lincoln Riley is great offensive coordinator, great offensive mind. He gets great quarterbacks, Quarterbacks that have high ceilings and he knows how to progress them. I will give him that. But as far as I think fully that's developing, the, I think that's the best way. Because here's what to add on to your point, coach. Lincoln needs a certain type of quarterback. Yes. Yes. Let me explain. 
So one of the reasons, I think that the whole Spencer Rattler situation multifaceted, but two, he likes a mobile quarterback. And you can say, well, Baker wasn't that mobile. Baker had no problem taking off in college. He thought he, he was Johnny Manziel. He didn't take away <laughs> from the police. Yeah, he didn't stove off from the police officers in the most successful manner. <laughs> but if it wasn't a police officer, like he was going to try and take off on you, right? And like, hey, hats off to him. He was a baller in college. Kyler would take off on you. Caleb would take off on you. Now think about this. He wasn't as successful with Spencer, who doesn't have the mobility. Coach, to, to add on to your point more, what about Malachi Nelson? Five-star quarterback who's now at Boise State, who was not a mobile quarterback. And I always say, I like Malachi, but I don't see how he fits into Lincoln's scheme because Lincoln needs that mobile quarterback. Nicholas, thank you very much for the four ninety nine. See if it's my VPN. That way I can stay a fan funder. I, yeah, man, I don't know about the uh, uh Nicholas, VPNs. so what's, what's happening with fan funders, and I tell people this all the time, it is smart to do it that way so you know what, when it's coming out because one thing about um, YouTube and a lot of these sites that allow you to subscribe and have those uh, reoccurring charges, they will get hacked. So I, I encourage people to purchase these with some type of prepaid card that's not connected to a, a primary bank account because we've had fan funders and there's nothing that we can control. We've had fan funders get charged extra like five or six memberships at one time. And that's not what we're trying to promote. Yes, we want you all to support, but we want you all to be safe with how you're handling your money. We living in a time where inflation is at an all time high. And I ain't just talking about for food. I'm talking about for, for just living. It's hard to just make it day to day. Um, and, and we don't want you losing $60, $70 off of YouTube, like entertainment that is free. You get what I'm saying? Yes, you all support us and it, it costs to run it, but this is free. And we don't want any surprises for y'all because then that, that takes your attention away from being able to be here and enjoy the content. So I, I always encourage people when you get the message, go renew. It don't hurt us. You know, we see you. We know you. We know you there. We know you there, Nicholas. Yeah. Much love, fam. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. No, nah, like look, that, Ty, Ty trying to come at you. Ty talking about that was an air I know, ball. I know. <laughs> Maybe it was, but you don't have to say it, man. Why you gotta be so? <laughs> why you gotta be so rude? <laughs> like, where's man? We need some copyright free music. I told Kyle whenever he was out there, and he's like, "Oh, I don't know if we could uh, play the music from practice." I don't know if yeah. you were in here, Coach. I said, "No, nah, just send it to me, and you'll hear me singing it in the background." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I'll Look, just do the rendition. <laughs> man, they had some, they had some fire out there. I don't even, you know what? All that new NBA young boy stuff, and I don't, I'm just not getting hip to it. Like I feel old when I say that, but I'm just not getting hip to it. And I was out there like, young boy be spitting. And I was yeah, like, he's got I, some heat, bro. Yes, bro. I didn't know. I and chat, beat me up if you want to. I don't care. I don't, I'm a musician, so it's hard for me to listen to a lot of new stuff coming from my era as a musician, like growing up, how I grew up with a lot of, I mean, Gucci Mane, T.I., uh, Mystical, Boosie, I mean, E-40, West Coast, I mean, uh, MGK, old school. I, I mean, like all those are is what music and rap was to me. So like listening to a lot of these new cats, I'm like, man, what are they saying? Beat fire, but I'm, I'm in Timmy, 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 Timmy. Jimmy, Jimmy, you, Jimmy, Jimmy, you look Jimmy. at my playlist, it's almost <laughs> exclusively. And you got to remember, Coach, you know this, but for those in the chat, I got a lot of family in New York. Yeah. So, like, I'm up in upstate New York and, or in New York City all the time, right? That's that's where my dad was from, upstate New York. That's where the love of the boxing comes in. Yeah, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Basketball and fighting, that's it. Yeah. Um, but I, you look at my playlist, and it's like Griselda through and through. I'm talking West Side Gun, Benny yeah. the Butcher, Conway <laughs> the Machine, 38 Special, Ransom, hey, Derringer. Like, Ty, Ty got some through. heat in this playlist, bro. That's see, all it are, is. You can't, I can't, I can't uh, recite not one of those songs, but you put on those artists, I will play them all the way through. I know I'm going to hear something. Like, I'm going to hear some, 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 uh, lyrics, I'm going to hear something that's going to be like metaphoric, like all of that make you think type stuff. Oh my God. You, brown boy. But listen, listen, bro. I got to get your take on this real quick. And, and this is something that was heavy. You were talking about it early on with saving on Capitol Hill. Why, why are fan bases denying the fact that Coach Saban not once has said he's against NIL? Like, before we get into anything else, why? I had a Florida State fan, and I can't stand this 
overweight, big belly self, always talking, got something slick to say about Alabama. And he a brother. So if he pop in here and hear me talking about him, oh, well, Damien, shut up. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, Coach Saban never said, I hate NIL. He is trying to save college football from doing the pay to play. And I'm telling y'all, the reason why he's trying to save it is the same reason why he did portal. The same complaints he had about the transfer portal. He said, if y'all open it up, the powers to be will dominate. Guess who's had the top five portal classes in the last four or five years that portal has been active? Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, USC. Ole Miss just now stepping in the picture. You're talking about the same top five teams who... Look at the last, the la- the only reason Clemson isn't doing it because they got a coach for, you know what I'm saying? I can't say the R word, but they got an R word coach. He, he that, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? He just won't use it. He he came out of public and, and, and said he won't use it. But y'all see, go look at the transfer portal. Colorado just hopped in there because of who? Coach Prime. You know, you got a new image. You got some energy behind it. They, were, they had a top uh, transfer portal class. So if if Coach Saban was telling y'all then about transfer portal, we can go and dominate that. Go and get a, a top five rated transfer class, and then now he's trying to say, hey, let's put some parameters on this NIL and let's let's regulate how these kids can earn money through that name, image, and likeness through the university that they're committed to. Why 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 are people like trying to deny the fact that okay, if he's telling us maybe he's trying to save us because he already showed us one time he could he could take over the portal. Oh my God. So coach, you know, you know better than anybody because you're after me all the time about it. My inactivity on Twitter, right? <laughs> yeah. But did you, I don't know if you saw yesterday cause I deleted it. Cause I was like, I don't know if this is the best look. And I, Uh-oh. I, um, I, I actually thought I seen it. I thought I seen it in the industry. I'm not going to say names, but mm-hmm. someone who's in the industry and I quote tweeted something and I said their name and I was like, Because someone was like, I don't know why they're taking this position. And I said, Blank has made an entire career off being disingenuous and facetious. So I'm not sure why anybody would expect any different now. Mm. I deleted it, but I fully stand by that take. I'm not going to attach names because I don't listen. That's not what this is about. Yeah. But the simple fact of this is, is that there are people in the industry intentionally misleading people because they know their views aren't what they should be. And they're going to get more views by stoking flyer fires, to, no matter how truthful it is. Nick Saban, coach, advocated not only for NIL. Here's the part that drives me up a wall. He said, let's have revenue sharing. Yes. For the vast majority of college football players, they will make more money under the proposition Nick Saban is putting forward. And this is the part that absolutely kills me. They want to pretend like everything is fine. Coach, what happened to the Pac-12? Where's the Pac-12? Gone. Non-existent, Ty. It's gone. Non-existent. Is is there a Pac anything right now? There's a Pac-2. Is there two. A Pac- I mean, but are they going to be the Pac-2 when, when the season kicks off? Is there, were there, was there a pack? Wasn't there a Pac 12 network or something like that? Didn't they have a new network and all this other stuff? Exactly. Like, what are they going to do? You're talking about a TV deal or a network deal that is out the window now because of the powers to be. And you know what it is? At the end of the day, it's not Nick Saban who's already made his 70 worth 70 mil. It's not him trying to be money hungry. It's the people who don't even have anything to do with college football that's not pouring into the, the up keep of it they're just looking at what it brings to their pockets because their name is on the side of it or they have a a position that gives them the opportunity to make decisions for something they don't even contribute to other than their own little sorry uh, opinions that benefit them and that's what this game is starting to come to and coach Saban is seeing it and he's doing the most political way possible to say hey this is getting out of hand. We're not making it about the young men no more. We're not making it about the coaches no more. We're not making it about the game of football anymore. We're talking about dollars and cents. And it's not making any of it. It's gonna it's the dollars are coming in, but ain't no sense in this. Ain't well, no can't make money if it this. don't make sense. So man. Can't listen. make money if it don't make sense. Listen, that's the biggest kind of crap I ever heard in my life. You can't you can't apply that to everything, man. College football is supposed to be college football. Call me, call me a traditionalist or somebody that's not a non-progressive. College football is supposed to be college football. There's a reason why it's college football, not pre-professional football. Why is there's a reason why it's not called the junior NFL, right? I, I mean, are we are we 
if we're going to take it that way, okay, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and do it and see how much see how much it falls off then. See how much money is wasted then. Because you 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 you're already admitting that you're not regulating anything right now. And that's what the problem is. Nothing is regulated. If we're gonna pay them, let's regulate it. Like everything else in life is when they're talking about exchange of business and money and contracts and things of that nature. Let's regulate it. Let's put parameters on it. We could put laws on everything, but the moment that Coach Saban says, let's, let's, let's maintain and, and keep that some consistency across the board, even when it comes to this money thing. Oh, to make it a competitive, uh, to create competitive, um, what is it called? Balance, man, people. And, and you know what? It's not even the powers that are, that are disagreeing. It's these, the, the fans and the, and the supporters of these teams that really are in a shamble. Like Florida State, they're on the they're on the cusp of, of probably dropping off again. They're they're probably going to drop off again. This is probably going to be their best season to come for a while, because well, after these realignments, oh my god, it's it's like this, Coach. I and it's the same person. This person is not the first time they and I have butted heads. Okay, and I mean, like I'm not. That's why I have so much respect for Josh Pate, and not just Josh Pate. There's a lot of great people in the industry, but to me, Josh is like. Always, because even if you disagree with Josh, he's going to give you a principled reason why he believes what he believes. I don't agree with everything Josh says. He and I actually disagree about the job potential of A&M. He thinks that A&M is a top-tier job because they have resources. I think that resources alone do not make you a top-tier job. And I I gave my political science background, Coach Smook. I talked about Venezuela. Somewhere that has unlimited natural resources in terms of oil and gas. Mm -hmm. Somewhere that sells a lot. But the country's in shambles. So just because you have access to great swaths of resources to be able to get a leg up does not mean you can currently mobilize those resources. And I feel the same way about A&M. Right? Like, you're not seeing them currently mobilize those resources. You have to do something in order to get there. So I don't think that the presence of ability inherently makes you great i think greatness makes you great right yep. and that's but like whenever josh put out his opinion he gave you reasons why he felt that way and so at the end of it i was like listen i don't agree but i understand how you got where you are and that's all i ever ask for because you gave sound analysis whether i agree or disagree that's not the point it made me have a thought it made me think for myself josh did his job as he always does it unbelievably yes. but there are some out there there are some out there it's killing you not to see <laughs> say that name i'm Bro, telling you i'm and I it's not you. the I, first time i hey. have been sad actually that this is encouraged the, right, the like thing, that's the thing. The thought process, and I think you're like me right now. Have we come to a point in this industry, right? And I'm, and I, I, I consider myself like you. I consider myself. I don't even consider myself at the middle. You know what I'm saying? I'm just starting to understand yeah, what this industry entails, and to know that to hear some of the things, even even how people are coming at some of our takes, right on the outside, like to hear some of the things that are being said is like why. If we're supposed to be bringing the perspective of truth, right? If we're supposed to be digging up the perspective of truth, why are narratives that are so far-fetched being given so much attention when there's truth right there in front of you? Like, let's 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 dissect truth first before we start throwing out false narratives and, and trying to create uh, obscure type of, of takes, like, to create clicks. That is so sad that we live in that day and time. I remember when sports reporting or uh sports reactions was like is it was logical you can you can listen to a point and disagree and, and say okay i just don't like his point but not to to not like my point and then say something so far off that it it, it like y'all seen my interaction on twitter with with uh doc holiday and and i respect him and what he does but his point was so far off I only respect him because he responded to me in a respectable manner. Hey, I got my my opinion. This is how I feel. Don't care to do a live debate. I respect what you do. Keep working, brother. That was the conversation. I can respect that because now I know he's not doing it for clicks. This is how he really believes. As much as I disagree with it, that's fair. He can believe that. That is cool. 
And that's, I can respect that. But when you have people that really just click bait, click bait, click bait, click bait, and then they get, when when you get behind the scenes and it's time for them to stand 10 toes down on what they're saying, they're trying to change the narrative. They're trying to find a new narrative. I can't rock with you. I don't respect anything that you're putting out there when it comes to any takes on any type of thing when it comes to football. Well, I, uh, the, the person I'm talking about, right? They actually started getting into it with another account that I follow, right? And it's a big account. I think most of us follow this account. They're another content creator, okay? And he was talking about how this, he, he quote tweeted what the guy said and said, blank says this is an incredibly lame false equivalency, right? This isn't the first time they've gone after each other. But instead right. of instead of engaging in discourse, the guy who originally made that claim, he just kept going, nah, nah. Basically being like, no, I don't even care to support what I said. I'm just going to try and continue doing these little one word things so that I look like I'm cool to the TikTok crowd. Like I was sitting there and I was like, buddy, I come from the world of speech and debate. I was very high up in that world. Yeah. Right. I went yeah. to nationals in high school in debate. I went to nationals twice in college for moot court. This is what I do. You're making yourself look dumb by doing the nah, nah. Like it was just ridiculous. Yeah. And, and see, this is crazy. I like this time. I like this comment by Mo Car videos. He says some of the players aren't worth the stars by their names. Can the coaches release the overrated players? Imagine the type of ridicule you would be given if you had. I'm just say, uh, let, let, let's not say, let's not put a name on it because I don't want any of our players to feel some type of way. But let's say, for instance, as Alabama, let's go, let's go in history. Imagine if NIL was around for Blake Barnett. And I can speak on Blake Barnett because I've seen the story. I've, I've, I've heard the, 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 from teammates I per, that I personally know. They, I've heard the energy that he brought to, to, uh, to Tusk Loose with him. And it wasn't, it wasn't accepted in the locker room. His energy was not accepted from the first day he stepped on campus until he left, right? You got a guy like Blake Barnett. Let's say he's from California, five-star, highly touted, comes in freshman year. You gave him 250 k to come and sign at Alabama. Now you get him out there, and he's just a bust, right? He doesn't get it. He doesn't want to get it. He's not putting in the extra work, not showing up early, not leaving. Like what, what NFL players usually do, right? But freaking the crap. He's just coming there off a of hype. Gets out there, and he's a bust. Can the coach, because this player at the end of the season, he, now he can leave after he done got this money from him. Can the coach stop him in week two and say, hey, we don't need your services no more. You free to go to the portal if you need to, but we're going to stop this this NIL or this pay out to you. Can the private investors who, who who are getting all these collective money together, can they stop taking care of this this kid because he's not doing what they expected? Cause then that's that's what we're opening up, man. We're not putting any restrictions on how this money is regu regulated. And you got slow Florida State fans that sitting there talking about Saban just mad because of the, the game catching. No, Saban has always been ahead. Two thousand nine up until I ain't gonna say two thousand seven, two thousand eight, but two thousand nine up until the day he retired, he was ahead of the game when it came to college football recruiting. How he was getting players into the NFL. You know, I mean everything. He was still at the top. You don't you don't go 15 years doing cons I mean consistently recruiting class. Was there a year where where Coach Saban was ever outside of the top five with recruiting classes while he was at Alabama? I think he had one number five recruiting class, and I believe it was 2018. So, no, okay, like, and it was a great class. I don't know how it, it was ranked five. It was a great and, class. And it, you got to think, man. Like even that year, you had teams like LSU. Uh, I think Ohio State was 18. That was like two, almost two, well, three years after they won in Natty. So, yeah, I think they were, I, Ohio State was still pretty, uh, trend. you had Notre Dame in the top five, I think 2018. It was it was a lot of teams that just popped on the scene. And, and you like, okay, Coach Saban still up there with a the number five class. And what they do in 2018, we lose two games. We missed the playoffs that year. No, we actually won the national championship the year, going into 2018. Then we missed the playoffs. So, yeah, I, I mean, people, I don't get the logic. Like, NIL has not been our problem. Recruiting hasn't been our problem. But we're the ones trying to fight for the rest of the college football co uh, committee or the college football nation or whatever. And they they just completely alluding the fact that we're not talking about don't play, don't give them NIL. We're saying don't pay to play. It's not going to work out for anybody. Nobody's going to be 100% happy. No child is going to say, 
oh man, I got 150K or, or 50,000, and then come and sit on the bench, they're going to be pissed off. They're going to be pissed off if they got to sit on the bench. You just hype them up talking about 50K, and then they got to come sit on the bench. That's why revenue sharing, in my opinion, it just makes it equitable. Everybody has access to the same amount. And then if Gatorade wants to pay your quarterback a million dollars, let Gatorade pay your quarterback a million dollars. But yep. revenue sharing gives everybody the exact same footing to start yep. with. Yep. And that to me is the biggest thing. Right. Well, I'm clip I'm clipping thing. our little I'm clipping our little segment right there. I think that was a good like a good overall good feel of what this really entails. And some people like 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 Megan just said, Megan just literally took it out the words off the tip of my tongue. Some people won't care until it impacts their team. Right now, nobody's feeling the immediate effect. But watch what happens when Kalen DeBoer go to Kalen DeBoer goes eleven and one, gets into the playoffs and possibly wins the national championship, or goes twelve and zero and gets into the playoffs and wins the national championship. When it goes undefeated, and, and people are like, "Oh, that's without NIL." You get what I'm saying? Like a mat uh, uh, without pay to pay. Uh, pay to play. Imagine if Kalen DeBoer can. Hey Nick. Well, they well Nick come tell him. Hey, KD. They ain't trying to put no regulations on it. Time to open the floodgates. You know what, Courtney Morgan, Kalen DeBoer, Aaron Hodges, Coach Saban, and all the people that he know gonna do. They gonna get on these phones. Elon Musk, who's a good friend of, of Coach Saban. Hey Elon, you think you can send me about fifty mil for this season? Huh, okay, cool. Mercedes. Guess what? All these. <laughs> Hey, yeah. What y'all got? 14 mil? Bet. Just for this week? Okay, bet. Hey, what's up? Ted? What's up, Ted? Hey, buddy. You remember when we were talking earlier this year? That's all it's going to be for Coach Saban. And then people going, oh, he's abusing it. No, no. Y'all wanted this. Remember? Y'all wanted this. This man is worth $70 million by himself. Coach Saban can write off $6 million and buy 20 players off of $6 million right now. Ohio State did it with 13. You don't think Alabama and the brand of Alabama can take $6 million from Coach Saban's pocket, Coach Saban, and say, hey, we want you to come play at Alabama. Here, 400K, 400K. Four. You know how many kids you can get 400K and they be ready to play at Alabama? Imagine. Some kids will come and don't even care about playing that first year. Just be able to, man, come on, man. And then you, you but when you start doing that, you diminish the, the preparation of the game. You diminish the dedication of it. That's what Coach Saban is highlighting. We're not giving players the opportunity to really appreciate the opportunities that we're giving them. It's like you're, 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 you're cutting out a whole phase of developing these young men into professional athletes. 100%. That's all we're stuck at. 100%. Coach. It has been a great, oh my God, almost 40 minutes of going back and forth. But I know you've got a whole segment prepped, yeah. ready to go. Yeah, we building a depth, chart, a depth chart today, man. That's all we doing. We building a depth chart today. Well, you're going <laughs> to need this time because I know right. that's going to be in depth. Ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. of the Undefeated, it has been an absolute pleasure. I will see you guys once again tomorrow in the morning for us to do a weekend's recap, right? talk about mm -hmm. everything that's happened for the week. And I'm probably going to rant a bit more there. So who knows? We'll see. As always, Coach Smook is going to kill it. Drop some likes down there and roll tide as always. Roll tide, brother. Take care. Shout out to my bro, Ty Hayes, man. I love it. Hey, so if y'all see me looking up a little bit, it's because I, I had to put my screen up to get my um my desk and stuff set up right, man. I'm, I'm still trying to get settled. Still trying to get settled. You get what I'm saying? So I love what we're doing here at Bama Football on YouTube. But before I get into the shout outs, man, we got to go pay some bills. We got to go pay some bills. And, and let's get into it, man. Hey, Kyle, you know what to do. Take it away, brother. Special thanks to our sponsor, Residence in Ocean City, Maryland. Guests can book at residenceinoc.com. Use the promo code LPR for special Bama football pricing up to 20% off. Also, go to the rogueshop.com, use the promo code Bama. You get legal CBD. For me personally, I like the topical oil. You know how intense my workouts are, right? So I like the topical oil. I like to rub that on my back, whatever, after those cinder blocks. So go to their website, cruise down, look through their website, and uh, definitely check out rogueshop.com. And like I said, I like the topical. Again, the promo code is Bama. Also, think about becoming a fan funder right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Become a part of the undefeated as low as $2.99 a month. That's 10 
cents a day. How do you do this? Make sure you're logged into your account. This is on a computer. You can also do this on your phone and look for the tab that says membership. Once you click membership, you can see different options. You can see an upgrade button right there to the right if you want to go through the different levels. We have fan funder videos from the staff right here at Bama Football on YouTube. Very easy to navigate. Let us know if you have questions inside the comment box when trying to upgrade or renew your fan funder membership right here on Bama Football on YouTube. And of course, if you want to rock that undefeated gear, Check out our merch store located at the bottom of the videos. We appreciate Patriot Life, Cynthia, Antoine, Caitlin, and to everybody else that supports us right here on Bama Football on YouTube. Yo, run it up, chat. I rock with y'all so heavy, man. I cannot stop laughing every time we play the commercial because I know it's coming every time Kyle says it. And yo, make sure y'all give him all the crap y'all can give him when he comes back on live for that statement. That one right there takes the cake every time. It's between that one and Wheels of Steel by Coach Sean. They get me every time, but let's jump into it, y'all. Let's get into it. Hey, run it up in the chat. Y'all know what time it is. It's roll call time. I'm trying to see who's here, who's active, who's trying to help me build this depth chart today. We only got one topic today. We're going to go in depth. We're going to build this offensive depth chart up. But before we get into it, let's get the roll call rolling, man. Y'all run it up. Auntie Janet with the first one. What's up, Auntie Janet in the chat? What's good? Good, baby girl she in here auntie let's get it man what's up cook how you feeling man what's good man what's up john how y'all feeling today this hey hey mr rubbing on my back is on the road right now he <laughs> he on the road what's up nicole what's up nicholas how you feeling you happy are you, are you feeling good happy to be here hey i'm happy to have you man happy to have you cynthia how you feeling sis What's good, man? Paul, how you feeling? Hey, I'm seeing a lot. Of, I'm seeing a lot of black names again, man. Let's get these fan funders up. Let's get these fan funders up, man. Y'all go out there. Let's let's get these fan funders up. Definitely pushing those because it definitely supports the channel. Heavy, y'all. It's people coming in. We got 230 in the chat. Let's get the likes up, man. I love y'all being here today. Megan, how you feeling? Jared, how you feeling? T holding, checking in. Hey, today let's check it. Let hey let's 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 change it up a second. Where you watching from? Go ahead and run the comments up where you watching from. And I'm going to give everybody a shout out that put where they watching from right now. What's up, Pops? Mom and Pops, Heinz here. What's good? Mom and Papa Smook. Look, it's crazy. Y'all y'all giving my parents nicknames and, and they got to go by my nickname now. That's what's up. That's what's up. I, I seen Papa Smook and Mama Smook in there the other day. I was like, that's what's up. And hopefully, y'all, my, my parents coming down for a day. They making plans. So, man, we're going to show them a good time. Y'all don't be acting up too much in front of my, my folks, man. They, they, y'all know, y'all know. My, I got, I got some good parents, man. I got some great parents. Y'all don't be acting up. Act like y'all, act like I got a little home training. All right. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I think Kyle mom might be trying to come this way too, man. Y'all just don't know. Y'all really impacting this channel on a different level. I remember watching Kyle's channel like two years ago, man. Not his channel, but, you know, when he was with the other network and then when he separated. uh, it, it, Yeah, it is two years now when he separated from the other network. I remember watching it, man. And he's allowing this new vibe to be created. And it's, it's big in part to y'all, man. So let's jump into it, man. What's good? What's good? Bama still, how you feeling? Where y'all watching from? I don't see no names. Oh, we got Calera, Alabama. We got Florence, Alabama. We got Sarah Okay, down there in Mobile, Huntsville, Alabama, up there with Coach Sean. Okay, what, what we got? We got Re Reform, Alabama. Okay, never been there. My boy said he in Jasper. Jasper, what's good? Yes, go. What's up, Damon? How you feeling, family? Birmingham in the building. Columbus, Georgia. Dino, what's up? You right there at home. Hey, go to church Sunday. 1510 Fort Benning Road. That's where my church at. Might You might see me there, man. We can, we can, we can link up, Dino. Go to church Sunday. Pull up on us, 11 a.m. Got a big weekend this weekend. What's good, man? Where y'all watching from? Fort Campbell? E from you and F from you and Fort Campbell? Ugh. Minnesota? Hey. Good. Let's get it. <laughs> what's good? What's what's 162 of the 225? I don't know what that is. Oh, 162 likes of the 225. Hey, run them up. Run them up. Run them up. The gump in the building? Yeah, that's my folks' hometown. That's that's where my family from. Let's go. Dwayne in the building. Let's go. Hawkinsville, Georgia. We everywhere. Somerville. Pensacola. Pensacola in the building. Let's go. Randolph County, Alabama. Birmingham. Let's go. Truck driving on the road. Alabama. That's what, Paul. That's what's up, Paul. 
hey, be safe on that road, my guy. Derek Austin, you from the Gump too? Y'all know what? That means our reach is really over the state of Alabama. We got to get outside of Alabama. We got people that's watching from everywhere. We got to start getting everybody in here from everywhere. So, hey, Salisbury, Maryland, in the building, 30, away, 30 minutes away from Ocean City. Hey, if you ever pull up our Ocean City, make sure you take a picture, email it to either Kyle um, at, at Bama Football on YouTube at gmail.com or coachmook at gmail.com, and we'll uh, give y'all some features. We all about fan interaction. Y'all know that. Alana. Doc Queen Duck, I said it right. Alana. Yeah. I'm from Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta. Oh, ain't no way you in Vegas turning up with us. That means you up early watching the show. Hey, hey, y'all remember yesterday I came, y'all came in here with that heat. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to. Like, I ain't gonna do it today. I ain't gonna do it today. And if you screen recorded that junk yesterday, y'all better send it to me. I need to make a TikTok. I ain't made no TikTok in a minute. Hey, hold on, y'all. Somebody just wrote me about a car. Y'all know I need a car, right? Yes, I'm. I'm yes, I'm very interested. Very interested. Give me that whip. Very interested. Come on. Oh yeah. About to send this to y'all real quick. Yeah. Hey, so here we go, y'all. Let's jump into it. Y'all ready to get on this depth chart, man? Montgomery in the house. Come on. Come on, man. Where else y'all watching from? Helena. Let's go. Helena in the chat. Helena. Ain't nobody watching from Buford, Alabama. Ain't nobody watching from Buford, Alabama, Panama City, by the way of Doth in the Peanut Festival City, the Circle City. Roll Tide from Tampa, Florida. How y'all talking, Florida? Y'all say bike. Y'all say bike in, in Tampa. Y'all say bike. I got. I can't wait to get my um my uh lighting right, y'all. I'm trying my best to get this right. Y'all see the y'all see the fuzz under me? You know what I'm saying? I don't like that. We're gonna get right though. The more y'all keep donating, I promise y'all, I'm gonna keep upgrading the equipment, man. And you know, you know what? Let me stop the music. I gotta do something. You grew up in Columbus, Corey? That's what's up, man. Me too. Hey, listen, I'm gonna stop the music for a second. I gotta do a personal thank you. But listen, some of you all have taken it out of your own kindness of your heart. And have been gifting and donating and just sowing seeds, monetary seeds in my life. I want to say thank you personally to each and every one of you. You made it your duty to not be mentioned by name. I don't, I, I usually, I would say I don't care, but I respect your wishes. But understand, I really appreciate you. Hey, praying hands in the chat for everybody that's been helping your boy out. This ain't been an easy transition, but it's been a great one. I've been enjoying the, the process. It ain't been the best. But I love what I do, and you guys make it great. So that's what I want to say before we get into the segments today. Before we make anything about Bama football or anything, I just want to give y'all my gratitude. I love you all. Thank you. God has been good. Um, I thank him for placing people like you in my life. You know, even the people that, you know, got their difference of opinion about me. I appreciate you. I definitely appreciate your support for this channel. Shout out to Kyle and T for giving me the opportunity. And I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep grinding, man. Keep grinding because I love it. I love it. It's too easy to do this. It's too easy to do your passion, right? Too easy to do your passion. All right, let's get into it, y'all. Let's get into it. I love y'all, man. Love y'all. Let's jump into it. Uh, so today, this is what we got going on. We got this going on today. Um, I want to show y'all this because we we got some got some depth chart action to, to get into. I know y'all been waiting on this. We kind of getting into uh some of the some of the aspects of it before we get back into spring training, right? We got the guys coming back from um from uh, spring break and we're gonna get into this man we ain't done chalk talk in a while so this would be kind of like our uh our 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 chalk talk i guess you can say but it's not really chalk talk we're gonna really build up this roster and it's gonna be a fun segment not a whole bunch of analysis not a whole bunch of debating uh, other than you know uh, uh other than us just you know talking about what players we feel like can come in here and be the starters at these positions so it's a few names on here that I, I want to keep there. I'm, I got to bring one back. Let me get my boy. Where my boy Tyler at? Find Tyler down here. Got to got to keep Tyler out there because we know that that it's a few positions that's just not being moved right now. Okay. Other other spots are debatable, and I'm gonna tell you why. But these four right here, I feel like are solidified right now. Let's just look at it. Let's talk about it. At the left guard, we're going to go work from left to right. At the left guard, if y'all disagree, y'all disagree, just say what say say you disagree or whatever. But we'll bring the roster up. We'll talk about um, who's available for those positions. 
And what's up, Jay Jackson? How you feeling, brother? How you feeling? Antonio Russell, that's my cousin right there. What's up, man? You on the north side, the north. We from the north, baby. We from the north. Auntie, mama, my mama in here, y'all. Mama, mama, you know I love you. Don't you know I love you, mama? Mama, you're the queen of my heart. Your love is like tears from the... Look, 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 look. Y'all don't... don't. Hey, I'm telling y'all. Y'all know I get to talk about mama, boy. Mama get in here. I might act up a little bit. She, let me tell y'all. My mama used to have me acting up on the basketball court. My daddy was my first coach. My mama was my first cheerleader, right? I remember my first game, I was playing for the uh, Fort Leonard Wood Suns, my first organized game. And uh, my dad had me playing point guard. You know, I was probably the most inclined player on the team. And uh, man, I remember my mama in the stands. I think I had, dad, how many points I had my first game? We beat the team 46 to nine. And I think I had like 24, 28 points. Like 14 assists as a as an eight year old, my first year playing organized ball. I didn't I, I I just understood the game at a different level. They were getting mad at me because I was shooting threes. And then what's crazy is at eight, we was playing in the uh eight and a half foot goal instead of 10 foot. My dad had me training in 10 foot goal from the time I was playing ball, like six years old. I never got to shoot in an eight and a half foot goal. So when I saw that we was playing an eight and a half foot goal, and he had our team. Yeah, I was a military kid, L Don. He had our team. Listen, my dad had us had us uh practicing at a different gym. We was practicing on the 10-foot goal. So a lot of my teammates wasn't even able to shoot. So guess what? When it came to that game, my, my first game, I think I had dad, my dad in here. Was it 24 or something like that? 1997, 1997, 1998, something like that. We was down there in Missouri. My first game, I had like 24, like 10 assists, uh, 15 steals, because that's how I was getting most of my points. Getting steals making layups you know doing the two-hand layups because i was so little you know yeah i was a dog man look at my mama in here see see i told y'all but let's jump into it y'all let's jump into it let's get into it let's pump it up i appreciate y'all for hanging out let's talk about it all right so first off first off listen um left guard i think is a i think our guard positions right now at the offensive line are solidified right i think we're solidified at the guard positions on both sides I think both of these guys come back with a lot of experience, right? A lot of a lot of game experience. You got Jaden Roberts who got inserted late, uh, later in the season last year. I feel like he should have been inserted from the jump. Um, when you're talking about the likes of Darian Dallacourt playing that position and not being as effective. Um, so seeing Jaden Roberts and Tyler Booker still manning those positions is uh oh yeah, there's there you go. Pops, pops remember. He remember. Listen, the first game we had 36, you scored 22. I remember that. I remember <laughs> my best game. Jordan Kane, that sounds like a big dog. You about six, seven, eight, six, eight, ain't you? <laughs> you was always the biggest kid. Hey, uh, Tyler Booker, Jaden Roberts, we got them solidifying those, those guard positions. I think we all can agree on that, right? So let's build the depth chart from these positions. Let's start at left guard. We got Tyler Booker as a starter. We're going to put the starter up above the, the, the position, and then we're going to bring the other guys behind it. So I'm going to just tell you what I've been seeing from practice. So at the left guard position, and mind you, I've only seen like maybe too deep, not necessarily. I haven't really been able to go in depth and pay attention to what, what's been, you know, at every position, still getting used to numbers. Numbers have changed. But um, at the left guard position, um, if you all had to pick your second string guy and we can go to the roster, let's go to the roster and see what, what we're looking at. Let's share this tab. Let's get into it, y'all. So you got, uh, let's go to the, the old lineman. Let's get down there to the old line numbers. 50s, right? I don't see no 40, 40 old linemen. You got Tyler Booker out there. Um, linebackers, linebackers, let's get to the old line. We got some old line. So Miles McVay, that's a tackle. He's he's a tackle on the roster. Y'all seen, if y'all if y'all didn't see it already, I posted a video of Miles McVay doing his workouts at, at his training facility today, at the training facility. And same thing me and Coach Sean was talking about yesterday. Being able to get out of that kick, right? Get at, get qu the quickness out of the stance. Kicking and getting it, sitting down and, you know, creating that contact, that initial jab, 
and locking up. Go watch that clip I posted of Miles McVay, and you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Technician to the T. That's the type of technique you want to see. Um, so who we looking at at left guard to to come behind uh uh Tyler Booker? My 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 first uh guess and and what I saw at practice was definitely Rock Montgomery was there. Rock Montgomery was there. So can can we can we be safe and say Rock Montgomery is going to be the second guy behind Booker? Oh, smooth. We were definitely at Fort Lawson at the same time. I graduated from Waynesville High School in 98. Whoa, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy, MJ. In 98. So that means you knew Edward Gibson. That means you knew uh, Robert Gibson. Who else was a, a high school talent then? Yeah, man. My sister was at, uh, I forget the name of the middle school. But yeah, that's crazy. So listen, listen, y'all. Who, who's second string? Rock Montgomery. I'm, I'm gonna go with Mark Montgomery. I think, and, and and I think that's the the logical piece, right? You're looking at Rock Montgomery coming into his second year on campus, doing the right work, doing the positive things, doing the right things every day. You know, putting in work. I see him. He's he's slimmed up a little bit, gotten a lot a lot more lean than than what you saw coming in with that baby fat coming in out of high school. I mean, it's just naturally something that happens. Right, so let's screenshot alert Rock Montgomery. Let's get him on the roster. And today's segment is going to be real smooth. We're just going to talk about players on the roster. Going to get them in there, right? Oh, did I mess the the screen up? No, I didn't. All right, here we go. Let me get rid of that. I got to save it. Here we go. Boom. I thought I practiced this enough to not mess up in front of y'all. Now I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassing myself in front of my friends embarrassing myself in front of my friends all right let me go over here upload it we're gonna add them to the uh we're gonna import let's see let's see where is it mm -mm. all right upload my device desktop here we go get in on him we got rock montgomery here now y'all got rock on the chat listen so where we where we gonna put him? Uh, yeah, we said we put him second string behind book, right? Second string behind book, yeah. Auntie Janet says she gotta go. Shout out to Auntie Janet with the nine ninety nine super chat. She said, "Smook, I got to go. See you this evening. Roll tide and keep grinding." Auntie's proud of you. Thank you, Auntie. Much love, fam. What's up, Sean? Pulling up. Talking about some smooks. Take the s off my name. Take the s off my name right now, Sean. I'm just playing. What's good, brother? Yeah. I appreciate y'all, family. Appreciate you, Auntie Janet. Much love for the nine ninety nine super chat. Yeah, hacking music. My little brother came home from his first game and blamed the rest for their loss. I asked him the score, and he said, <laughs> "MJ, no man, no." Did your little brother happen to play against the Waynesville? I mean, the uh, Fort Leonard Wood Bulls, because that was the team they ended up making us an AAU team. We got sponsored. And everything went to Jefferson City and came in second place in AAU Nationals, man. 1999. Pretty solid team. 98-99. We was crazy. Yeah, what's up? Look, y'all gonna y'all gotta stop with the smooky and the smooks. Um, we gonna hey, y'all gonna have to see me when, on A Day. Smook really, really quick. Was it true you were on the all army basketball team? Son, yes, I made the team, but I never got to play. I tore my ACL two weeks before it was time for me to. Um, go down to San Antonio and um, get ready for region. And then we were supposed to go overseas and do all that good stuff. I tore my ACL 2013, man, in my um my left leg. Tore my left ACL. And yeah, bad time. Yes, yeah, Sean. A lot of them. A lot of them. I got to meet some guys. Because <laughs> you putting S's on my name. So we got Rock Montgomery there, y'all. Got Rock Montgomery. Second string. And we'll just go too deep for today. We'll go too deep for today. I know some positions where we'll be able to go further, um, but we'll go too deep right there. All right. Um, what y'all want to do? Left tackle. Let's do left tackle. Let's do left tackle. Let's do offensive line. Um, only reason I went there because Rock Montgomery is somebody that was really fresh on my mind. I didn't want to forget where I seen him at. Now let's build it up. This is all about y'all right now. This is all about the chat. This is all about the undefeated. Let's go. Left tackle. Who's our starting left tackle this, this, this season? Coming into spring. Who does Alabama, the, the undefeated chat, see as our starting left tackle? Right now, left tackles you have available. I'm going to say uh, we got Miles McVay. We got Wilkin Formby. We got Elijah Pritchett. 
Um, who else? Guys, that that Nikhil Bertrand, uh, Bertrand, uh, Betrin, Bertrand. I thought it was Nikhil Bertrand. Is it Betrin? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Come on. Who y'all got? Offensive tackles. William Sanders is here on on campus. He's a true freshman. I think Sanders is probably going to be uh probably going to play tackle, right? Am I am I mistaken, y'all? Shout out to Antonio Russell with the five dollar super chat. He said, "Shout out, cuz glad to see you back on home soil. God bless your fam. Hey, appreciate that, brother. Appreciate that, cuz. Oh man, for real, man. Can't wait to get my family down here. Get everybody settled in. We doing big things down this way, man." Y'all, this uh, headband thing keep coming down on my little slick forehead. About to make me mad. Appreciate that $5 super chat. We saying Pritchett. I'm running it up. We running it up right now. Starting starting left tackle, Pritchett. Pritchett is starting for y'all. Cynthia might be on to something. Cynthia might be on to something. But I'm going to go with the chat. I'm going with the chat. We got Pritch. We got Pritch. We got Pritchett. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of Pritchard, so I'm going to go ahead and put Pritchard out here. All right? We're going to go ahead and put Pritchard out here, and I think he's already over here on this side um, right here. Yep, we got him right here. Oh, Lordy. Time to group that. What we got going on here? Here we go. Got Pritch right here. And then who's coming in behind Pritch, y'all? Let's go back to the roster. Let's go back to the roster. You got, uh, let's see. Who we got? Who we got? We got Nikhil Bertrand, right? We got, uh, and this is left tackle. We got Miles McVay. I'm going to tell y'all realistically what, what I saw, okay? Now, nah, Formby's not going to be a left tackle. Formby, I told y'all, if y'all was watching the other day, I told y'all Formby was the starting right tackle. He was in first group the other night um, um, last week when they was going through the first week of practice. So Formby was definitely starting right tackle on both, I mean, both days when I watched. So we're not. I'm not going to give y'all form B. I'm not going to let y'all mess mess yourselves up like that. So we got we got uh, Pritchett as the starter. Who's who's behind Pritchett? McVay. I kind of like McVay. I like McVay there. I seen him working both sides at tackle. He was working both tackles, right? I think he's going to be on the left side at, when it's all said and done, right? Don't forget we got Olis Alanin. He's probably going to play guard, but at the same time he's flexible. He played tackle in high school. Bertrand or McVay? Let me run. Let me let me run some of these names up. Let me run some of these names up. John, I'm gonna get to your question after we 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 get into this depth chart a little bit more because we got we got a long time. So save save all your extra questions outside of what we're talking about to the to the end. Just I, I got to start for you. Uh, who we got? McVay. I got a McVay. Somebody said Formby second. Formby's not gonna be second on that side, man. I'm telling y'all, Formby is the starter on at right tackle. Got uh Pritchett, uh, Bertrand. I got a McVeigh. So we got two for McVeigh, three for McVeigh. We got another Bertrand. Look like Max Street. I'm gonna say this one last time, y'all. Wilk and Formby is starting at right tackle right now. M- M- Wilk and Formby is starting at right tackle, and and I'm, I've been saying it all off season. He's gonna grab one of those spots. I just didn't know which one. Um, and we could, you know what? I think I got some B-roll here that we could run with some of the practice footage and y'all could actually see him as a starting right tackle. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Um, now we don't have B-roll footage back here. Doggone it. Thought we had some, but it is what it is. We'll get some. We'll get some in before it's all said and done. We'll have some ready for tonight. As a matter of fact, where we at, where we at with the comments? McVay, McVay. All right, I'm feeling McVay. I like that. I like that. Let me go to let me go back to this tab. Do I have him out there already? So we're gonna put Miles McVay under there, right? Gonna put Miles McVay under the, the right, I mean left tackle. Let me get y'all over back to this tab. So y'all liking this right now? Too deep right here. We're talking about the left side of the line. That's actually a solid line. I honestly, y'all, and if we want to talk, have a little two-minute debate. By the end of spring, who wins this? Who wins this battle right here? Who wins this battle right here by the end of spring? In y'all opinion, this is this is what we're going with as the two. 
as the two that's that's fighting for the position right now. Who wins this battle in y'all in y'all opinion? I wish I had uh somebody on the wheels of steel in the back to run polls because it's kind of hard to navigate on two computers by myself. Y'all think Miles? We got one Pritch, one Miles. Come on, Tip. How you feeling, Tip? Tip, you you hit it on the head earlier with uh with with Ty's uh gripe with who he was talking about. <laughs> you hit it. Larry Large, McVay. Okay. I like Miles. We got two Miles. We got two Miles, one Pritchett. We got three Miles. I like y'all. I like where y'all energy at. Did y'all see? Yeah, did y'all see it? He's just way more technically sound than Pritchett. And I think they're about the same strength. And McVay is nasty too. I think that's what kept him from being on the field last year, trying to over abuse guys instead of rely on technique. That was the same thing that was wrong with Caden Proctor, trying to abuse guys. You can't do that at the college level. You got to use technique. You're going against some of the best edge rushers. McVay, Pritchett is more experienced, so he'll get the nod. Nope, Chris, ain't no hey, experience ain't got nothing to do with this year. Ain't experience got nothing to do with it. McVay, so we're going to go with McVay. We're going to go with McVay winning that job. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a good trend. Hey, Chris, and I understand what you're saying. But we, you got to remember, this is a new era, man. This is a new era. We don't know what to expect. We only go by what's being displayed on the, on, on the field. And what's being displayed right now, Miles McVay is making more progression and making more noise than Elijah Pritchett. I promise you I wouldn't tell you wrong. Y'all know me. I ain't going to lie to you. Coach Smook ain't going to lie to you, man. I'm going to stand on business. <laughs> we stand on business. All right, so I like I like I like our two deep right now. I like our two deep. I think we kind of uh good. And my thing is, God forbid if, if if Tyler Booker goes down, but if Tyler Booker goes down, I'm I'm excited about Rock Montgomery getting an opportunity. Nah, Chris, I ain't trying to be right, man. I'm I'm always you know I'm always good for I'm always open for a little little disagreement, open debate. But yeah, didn't Coach Sean say Miles too? Yeah, Coach Sean love Miles McVay. Coach Sean love Miles McVay. You know. I think I think I'm more big on Wilk and Formby and Coach Miles. I mean, Coach Sean is big on Miles. I just I, Wilkin is just a, a technician, man, and he's huge. I didn't realize how big Wilkin was, man, and can move. Yes, there you go, Glenn. You are Glenn. You get the prize of the day. You get them. You get the prize of the day, Glenn. I'm shaking up my cranberry juice because it's, it's starting to get. Listen, I'm sorry, y'all. Another another segue, another un, un, unimportant fact, right? Did y'all know if y'all open these right after they get frozen and pop the top, it'll slush up for you? <laughs> it's crazy, huh? I love some slushy, uh, uh, grape, raspberry cran, raspberry cran grape. That's what it's called. It's fire. Yeah, man, I love it. But yeah, the staff wants mobile, athletic offensive linemen. You look at Miles, you look at Wilkin, you look at Tyler, you look at Jaden, you look at James Brockemeyer, you look at Parker Brailsford, you look at Ian Noda, you look at Olis Anin, you look at Casey Poe, you look at all those type of linemen. That's the reason why you don't see them overhauling, trying to get a whole bunch of tackles, a whole bunch of guards, a whole, you get what I'm saying? They're, they feel good about their group. They're so young and they're transitioning to this new style of movement and playing. So I like it, man. Pritchett and Booker. Pritchett and Booker, you think that's who it's gonna be? I'm telling you, man. Yeah, just wait. Just wait. Wait till wait till wait till it starts getting um it, which uh wait till it starts getting into the nitty-gritty this week coming up. Yep, yep. McVeigh came in as a freshman, calling out number three. Woo! Calling out number 31. My fault. Calling out number 31. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Miles, Miles was there. He was going against Will and all those guys. Why he didn't get an opportunity on the field last year? While while Proctor was was struggling, that to me that was that was beyond me. That was beyond me. Let's look at center, y'all. Let's move on to center. Who we looking at? Let's go back to the roster. We got we got two centers realistically that are going to um, be competing for the starting job. You got Parker Brailsford, Parker's Br Parker Brailsford, right, and James Brockemeyer. Now this is what I'm gonna tell y'all. And I, I gave y'all this little snippet the other day, right? When I was out watching practice on Wednesday, and I also got to get some word Friday, seen a few clips from Friday. James Brockemeyer was the starter. He was in first with first group with uh Booker, Formby, and um and uh Booker, Formby, and Roberts. 
the interior to Formby was the same. From left guard to the right was the same. Both times, both days, um, when I watched them in practice with the first group, right? Left tackle, that was uh, Bertrand. You had Miles McVay. You also had Elijah Pritchard at left tackle, right? Um, uh, so I'm going to say this. At center, Brock Amar and Parker Brels for in the competition. Who's going to get first snaps going in? Let's 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 say who's going to be the starter going into the spring based off your opinion, right? Your opinion, and we're going to start taking the, taking a vote right now, right below this comment. Center position. Here we go. Y'all see the comment? As soon as you see the comment, we got Parker Brailsford. So we got we got fifty eight, which is Jane Brockemeyer, and then what number is Parker? I want to say sixty nine. Oh, that's Joseph Ianata. What number is Parker? I didn't know. What number is Parker? Come on, fact check me, chat. Help me out. Help me out. Don't leave me out here by myself. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Oh, there you go. There you go. 72. 72. My fault. You got 58 and 72. 58 and 72. What are we looking at? 58. We got Brock. We got we got Brock. We got Brailsford. One 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 that's two one Brailsford two two three two three three four three Brailsford what's this five three six three right seven three eight three okay I see it I feel you okay y'all ain't gotta yell at me no more y'all ain't gotta yell at me no more we're going to put Brailsford out there as the starter. Let's do it. Y'all ain't got to yell at me no more. Stop yelling at me, okay, guys? Everybody stay calm. Everything's going to be just fine, okay? <laughs> Everybody stay calm, man. Everybody stay calm. Parker Brailsford, we're going to put him on, right? Let's get Parker out here, y'all. I like this. I like this vibe today. No debating. We just we just voting. We doing what we do. We just going we gonna to do what we do. Bring the energy, right? Parker out here. Get Parker out here. We got my boy Parker Brels for starting at center right now. Coming into the spring. And, and honestly, I'm going to tell you, I told y'all what I saw. And I still think it's still Parker, even though James was there. I still think it was Parker. I think you're giving James an opportunity. He's working his butt off. He looks good when he's moving on the field. I honestly believe that he will make a push to be a starter. Right this year, this this style of offense actually fits his skill set. He's gonna fight. He's gonna fight, and I think he might. He I don't know if he'll beat out Parker Brailsford, but Brockemeyer has I think another year. Brailsford is going to be eligible for the draft this year, and right now Parker Brailsford is actually being rated as one of the top. Uh, I think he's like number six offensive lineman. Right now, coming into this year, he's he's eligible for the draft coming into this this season. It would not be crazy to have James Brockemeyer stay around for a fifth year, right? Or fourth year would be his. No, it'll be his fifth year. It wouldn't be crazy to see him stick around for a fifth year and be a one year starter and then do what he got to do. It wouldn't be crazy. So let's go ahead and put James there as the second guy, right? Let's get him in here. Cause I I honestly think this is going to be a good competition. To me, that great comp, a big competition creates value for your roster, you know. And I don't think any of these guys on the front, you know, these first two deep, I don't think they're going anywhere. Transfer portal is not a, a word being tossed around right now. It's it's two players on on this team that I heard about that that might be in there in the portal, and um, they won't it won't be a loss if we lose them. Some of y'all might be mad because the name one of the names is is he came in so highly touted, but. Hey, he don't fit the system. He don't fit the scheme. Let's go to right guard. We know Jaden Roberts going to be the starter, right? What's up, Lisa? How you feeling? How y'all feeling today? Brailsford, 275. I'm a little worried. He's he he's going to get pushed around like crazy. Did you see how he handled himself against Michigan? Did you see? Russell, I just want you to answer this for your boy. Did you see how he handled himself against Michigan? And all as... At 275, going against that rotation, that 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 much rotation in Michigan, 
Parker Brelsford graded out the highest in that game, and you saw how that offensive line struggled. And it was in no part of his fault. It was in no part of his fault. I'm telling y'all right now. Parker Brelsford, he don't need to be 290. 275 in this offense in this day and age is the perfect size for a center. Russell, how old are you? Just curious. Just curious. Brels fit. Hey, he fits the schematics and he's a strong guy. 275. He's strong. He's very strong. I'm talking about 275. He's getting up 485 bench, right? 485. So twice his weight. He's getting the big guys off of him. You know what I'm saying? He's not Jaden Roberts, who's 550 or whatever he was bench pressing. He's not Jaden Roberts. Not many people are going to be Jaden Roberts. But he's a strong guy. Squatting six. You know what I'm saying? 500 plus. Yeah. Hey, listen. Seth got us. Hey, Seth got us PTSD. Seth got us in PTSD. Somebody tell Lisa to uh somebody tell Lisa to, to hit the live. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what's up, y'all. Here we go. So who's coming in behind Jaden Roberts at right guard? This is an interesting thing because I think we have a lot of guys <laughs> right now that can go out there. And, and if Jaden goes down, who, who slides in right now? And we're talking about offensive guards. We got Rock Montgomery on the left side. I saw that for sure. Um, Let's see. We have who we got. Bertrand is going to pay tackle. We got Ian Oda, who's probably going. To, he's going to be there uh, with an opportunity. You got William Sanders with an opportunity to play guard. Um, Olenin, are we seeing Olenin, Casey Poe? I'm liking 73 and 74. Though I think those two are competing for that guard position. What y'all think? When I seen them on, when I seen them at practice, those both of them were there. At both guard positions, uh, I can't remember which one was on the third group though. So we're looking at this right here. Casey Poe. So we're going to say 73 and 74. Left guard. Second up. Here we go. Under that. Right here under this comment. Right here. Let's go. We're starting to vote in now. Somebody said oldest. We're loaded on the front. That's what I'm saying, guys. Tapped in. You, you See, this is what I think people failed to do when Satan retired. And after all them transfers left, I think they failed to go ahead and just look at our roster. That's what I'm feeling. I'm, that's what I'm I'm feeling. I think they just failed to look at our roster. They refused to go to Google and type in Alabama's 2024 roster and look at it. <laughs> Casey Poe. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of Casey Poe. Oldest. I got two oldest. One Casey Poe. Two Casey Poe. Three, four, five, six. Hit the live button. Uh, bottom left of the stream may have to top may have to top the stream. Okay, yeah, you talking to Lisa? Oldest. Okay, we getting it's 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 about four six right now. Four six, five six. Okay, we tie back up. Come on, I need a tiebreaker. We got six six. Come on, Poe will be all American before he leaves. So who's your vote? Who's your vote, Glenn? Oh, you already came with Poe. Okay, Jimmy seven six seven six. We got seven six Poe. That's my best argument. O-line coaches is let's go go to the roster facts, right? <laughs> facts, man. Oh, I think oh, this is pulling off. Oh, we back tied. We back tied. All right. Hey, listen. I'm gonna do a flip up. I'm gonna do a flip up. Cause it's 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 split even. You got two highly tied guys. I think they're gonna stick around and battle it out. I don't think either one of them leaves this year, right? You got a red shirt freshman in Olis. You got a true freshman in Casey, right? Experience doesn't matter. When I'm looking at Skill set right now, Olis at his size, at that position, he gives you more of the Jaden Roberts feel, right? He gives you more of the Jaden Roberts feel. He gives you the same type of movement as Jaden Roberts, right? So I'm gonna go with Olis. I'm gonna go with Olis as my as my second guy, right? And right behind him, right behind him, and not necessarily a left or right guard. I think the first guy off, if you if you have to go. And start experiencing, right? I think it's Casey Poe. I think it's the true freshman, Casey Poe. I think he's coming in with a, a lot of technically sound, you know what I'm saying, movement and things of that nature. I think he's your next guy that's up. He's not the, the second guy, but he's no matter which side, whether it's left guard or right guard, 
I think he's up. So I'm gonna just because we're going too deep, let's put all this there and let's see if we end up being right. Let's see if we end up being right. And I'm telling you, I saw both of these guys rotating at this position. Um, the competition is gonna be crazy. All right, right tackle. This is another one. I already told y'all who was there. I'm gonna go ahead and put him there. Book and Farmby, both groups. Yeah, this is my young boy. Me and Wilkin are uh, becoming homies. <laughs> Me and Wilkin are becoming homies, man. I might, I might end up having the Formbies adopt me before it's all said and done. Cause mom, Mama Formby, she, she's so nice, y'all. I'm going to see the chiropractor again before I go down to um, Columbus this weekend, Phoenix City this weekend. So we got Wilkin Formby starting there. I'm just letting y'all know that's what it was, right? That's what it's gonna be, right? Right now, going into the spring, going into spring training. We got Wilk and Formby there, right? Yes, Smook. File this away and see if we're yeah, we hey, that's what the plan is. We want to see how how close we are when the uh when the first uh, after the first scrimmage, right? Jim Parker said, just because you always bringing it, Smook. Appreciate the twenty dollar super chat, my guy. Much love, man. Big Formby definitely gonna be started. He gonna hey, appreciate that, Jim Parker. For real, we do. We definitely greatly appreciate it. Somebody said, uh, yeah, Big Formby definitely going to start. 100%. 100%. So we don't have to waste time with that. Come on, y'all. I feel y'all. Yes, we on the same page. I love it when we on the same page. Uh, yeah, JT, tell him. So, so Glenn, Glenn, if you don't follow me on Twitter, go follow me on Twitter. I have recent posts of Wilkin and Miles McVay both working out. And, I mean, you don't have to see them actively on the field to see, like, movement, right? You don't have to see that. You just look at they they technique. You see how low they're keeping, they're sitting, and being able to move in that stance, right? Gain like gain space, take up space, close space. I mean, these guys are both of them putting in work, man. Formby is definitely going to be the starter. So who's going to be second string? Let's jump to the second string. Let's get on the roster and see who we got available. All right. So tackles, 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 tackles. Let's get up a little bit. We got to go up. We got Nikhil Bertrand, who isn't on the who isn't on the um. On the on the on the depth chart yet? Uh, who else? We got William Sanders. I don't know where. We, somebody give me an honest opinion. Honest opinion. Where are we going to play William Sanders? Because in, in at the high school level, this true freshman he played tackle and guard, right? Well, he played tackle and guard. So um, where is this guy going to play? I, I think he's talented enough to play either or at the college level. You put a guy like him who can float like that. You put him on. The right side, in my opinion. That's just my personal opinion. What are y'all thinking? Where's your thoughts at with it? Got William Sanders that's there. You got Ayanota, right? Joseph Ayanota, he's going to play tackle. It's stacked. Yo, that's crazy. 5'11", 245, old lineman. That's crazy. That might be a misprint. Or maybe it's not. <laughs> Bertrand, we got Bertrand. Who else? I, I, we got some freshmen coming in, don't we? Don't we got some freshman tackles coming in? Y'all know we got Pritchett and McVeigh on the other side, right? What y'all thinking? Booker? What's up, Lisa? How you feel? Look, she late. She's still late. She's still late. <laughs> Somebody help Lisa out, y'all. Somebody help Lisa out. McVeigh? Y'all think McVeigh gonna, gonna be double slotted like that? Y'all got to remember, we got McVay as number two on the other side. I don't think they're going to double slot guys this early. Not when you got 12, 12 offensive linemen on the on the roster. So what I'm going to do is, I seen you, AJ. I seen you try it. Uh, what I'm going to do is, right tackle, second up. They said Sanders a guard. I want y'all to put y'all right tackle, uh, second up under there. They're all OGs in this class. Facts, man. Sanders a guard? Okay. I, I I mean, I agree. At the college level, I agree because I think he's going to continue to put on size. Um, But yeah, Bertrand. Okay. We got Bertrand. We got one Bertrand. <laughs> Brian Teller. <laughs> I need to catch up for sure. Oh, now you caught up. I think you might be caught up now. I think you might be caught up, sis. <laughs> I think you caught up now. I, I see Bertrand. We got two for Bert. I think too. I think Bertrand too. He's going to go through a, a hard learning curve though, because he's coming out of a system that just didn't require him to do much. And they, they, that offensive line at A and M was definitely 
um, talented, but they were not effective as they could have been. So I think uh, he's going to come in and have to go through a learning curve, as most do, as most do. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. So let's let's get Bertrand on 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 the roster, y'all. Let's get let's get Bertrand out here. Now this is y'all roster. Now it's y'all roster. I'm only giving y'all the nuggets I can account for. Can't account for everything. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Got text messages coming through. Uh oh. Do we got one today? Okay. Nope. No, no. Hey, no news, y'all. Here we go. So let's get Birchin on the roster. Here we go. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to make sure I reply to that one. Some of my inside of people moving around a little bit. Oh, no, wait. I got the wrong name up here, y'all. My fault. Wrong guy. Delete. What happened to my Nikhil Bertrand? Uh, Jimmy John. I thought I had it. I didn't, I didn't screenshot it. I guess not. Let me see. I might have it over here on the side. Y'all like this vibe right here, though? This chill vibe we, we talking about, depth chart? Because I, I think it's going to be more fun when we get to the, um, when we get to spring training and we actually get to see what how this shapes out. So let me get in the quill again. I don't know why it's not giving it to me like, like I asked for it. Save image. We're going to go to desktop. That's why. Here we go. So we're going to do this right here. My device. Boom. Get them out there. Here we go. There we go. Now we got them. Boom. Now we get into the exciting part now. Wide receiver. We're going to the X spot. All right. If you all know positions, if you all know how this this these offenses are, are built, right? Let me get y'all to this screen too. While we updating the roster. I mean the depth chart. So starters. Got Elijah Pritchett left tackle. We got Tyler Booker at left guard. We got center Parker Brailsford, right? First group, Jaden Roberts and Wilkin Formby shaping out that first team O-line, right? The next, for the second group, we got left tackle, Miles McVay. Rock Montgomery at left guard. We got James Brockemeyer here at center, second string center. Liking that energy. Olis, o Olias Olin Alanine, right? Second string guard. Then we got Nikhil Burchan at second string right tackle. I always going to be something else. Listen, that's and then this is the thing, y'all. I think this team is bought into the fact that outside of certain positions, being the starter doesn't really matter. Coach Kalen DeBoer is not opposed to rotating offensive linemen. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited about this offensive line. Let's go to the X position, the X wide receiver position. Now, we got a lot of names available, right? Got a lot of names available. Oh, Y'all want to do tight end first? Let's do tight end first. Let's do tight end first. So tight end, we got CJ Dupree, and we got we got uh got Danny Lewis. So CJ Dupree. 81 or Danny Lewis. And I think Danny Lewis is number 87. I'm not going to. Am I, if I'm not mistaken, my boy Danny, 87. Yes, sir. Here we go. Under this comment, y'all. Under this comment, 81 or 87. Under this comment, under this comment. I'm only counting under this comment. We got one for for Dupree. Inside scoop. Dupree has been in the black jersey all first week of training, and Danny Lewis is out there getting the opportunity as a starter, and he is not. Disappointing. Just the inside scoop. So with that information, what y'all think? 
Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Dupree. One Danny. Eight Dupree. Come on. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. With that tidbit of information, I'm telling y'all, Danny Lewis was, hey, Danny Lewis was seeing a lot of the field last year towards the end of the season. His skill set fits this offense a lot more. We got three Lewis. We got three Lewis. We got about nine Dupree, 10 Dupree. 81 and 87 will be better option, but play second initially. Huh? Yeah, I can agree with that somewhat. Now you're going to give us a nugget after the info. Hey, y'all got to be paying attention. We talked about this, what, two days ago? Three days ago. I've been dropping y'all dimes all, all week, all the past two weeks. Imagine Lewis and Odom at the same time. That's the thing. Odom not even a tight end no more, Glenn. Odom not even a tight end no more. He's 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 been uh, switched to the X receiver, the X position. Dupree was missed a lot when he was wide open last year. Facts, AJ. He's in a black jersey right now, though. What about the tight end transfer from Washington? Not starting. Not starting. Not starting. Yeah, Josh Quavis is not coming in to start. I promise you that. Having him in the room is very big, though. It's very helpful. So I think we're gonna go with Dupree right here. That's 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 what y'all going with. Undefeated. We're going with Dupree for y'all. Y'all, y'all, this is the first one I think I'm gonna disagree with y'all on. It's the first one. Even even when he comes back healthy. I and I, I'm looking at this the the skill set. The skill set's available, right? And um, I'm I'm just saying, Danny Lewis just gives gives me more solid blocking, faster, better hands. Um, I mean, aggressive can stretch the field better. To me, Robbie Oos is not going to start at tight end. He's going to be like an H back. He's going to be an H back. Yeah, he's not going to he's not going to come out in your eleven personnel and be the guy at tight end. He's still there, but he's not going to be that guy, right? He's going to be your ace back, full back guy. That's still the tight end position is just classified differently. has different types of assignment. Primarily a block, blocker, chip guy, get to the flats, decoy, you know, extension of the run game, blocking game. So let's put let's put uh, Danny Lewis right there behind. Uh, Danny Lewis right there behind CJ Dupree. Right? This roster is looking good too deep right now. And then we could we we can actually put an H out here. We can put an H out here later. We'll 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 do like some some uh some different stuff. Listen, do y'all want to go wide receivers first or do y'all want to go to quarterback running back? I think the wide receiver group is gonna have a lot of debate. So y'all wanna go quarterback running back, quarterback, running back, then wide receiver, or do y'all wanna do wide receiver first? Answer right here. Wide receiver, look. Wide receiver. We got one wide receiver. Come on. Come on, run them up, y'all. Run them up. Everybody want to do wide receiver? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. We got one quarterback. We got one quarterback. Big homie said quarterback. I think we kind of know who the quarterback is going to be. That's why. And I think running back is kind of solidified, too. We And we're going to go uh, three deep on those, those spots. Wide receiver, running back, and quarterback. Got QB, QB. Got a few quarterbacks. People want. I see wide receiver coming. Wide receiver coming in heavy, QB, wide receiver, running back, quarterback. Okay. We'll go running. We'll go wide receiver first. We'll go wide receiver. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. X. Now I want y'all to think of think about it like this. These starters, and I'm I'm gonna pull, I'm probably gonna go three deep at each position. Right? I'm gonna go three deep at each position because we're gonna see a healthy rotation of wide receivers. I think uh realistically, we're probably gonna see eight wide receivers play the game. Yes, you heard me right. Eight wide receivers. You will see a lot of 11 personnel. You will see a lot of 10 personnel. You see a lot of uh, 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 five wide. You get what I'm saying? Like, there will be a lot of opportunities for wide receivers to get reps. You got a lot of young guys who are going to be getting key for certain play designs, right? Uh, so, um, at the X position, at the X position, and, and I'm... <laughs> Wide receivers, I'm gonna be very critical of y'all, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a debate a lot because 
Some of y'all are, are, are names, are, you're all about names instead of actually looking at film and, and whatever. So y'all might, y'all might feel my passion on this one. And I'm not, I'm not shooting you down. Uh, we're just debating. Okay. This is the one where it's going, I'm going to take it personal. So, and y'all putting, y'all putting answers in before we even get started. X starter. Here we go. Let me get them. Over at the X, who's going to start at the X? And mind you, these are the names you have available. I'm going to pull them down for y'all. Got Caleb Odom. Got Jalen Hill. You got Jeremy Bernard. And who else was I, did I see over there? Who else did I see over there, y'all? Those guys aren't on campus yet. It was somebody else that I seen over there. And this is just going into spring. So everybody's saying, Ryan Williams, you're, you're out of order. You're out of order. You're wrong. You're out of order. Let me go back up. Look and see what these wide receivers. Making sure I ain't missing nobody. Wide receivers wearing all the low numbers, y'all. There's very few wide receivers with, uh, with, uh, Okay, getting into it. I'm just looking. I'm just checking the roster for the for the uh the wide outs. Make sure I ain't missing nobody. And then I'm gonna count them up. I'm gonna count them up for y'all. It might work that better that way. Let me see. Okay. Caleb Odom, Jalen Hill. X X X. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Jeremy Bernard. Yep. I got them all for the X. So those are three names I got to choose from right now. Those three names right there. All right, let's get it. About to count them up. About to count them up. And hopefully, you you guys have been listening. Uh, have been listening to the to the uh the reports, um, that have been coming out. Jared Prentice is not the ex receiver, bro. <laughs> See, people don't listen. Um, Kendrick Law, I most likely misspelled his name. He's not an ex receiver. <laughs> Okay, guys, your X receiver is going to be one of your big guys that's going to be able to stretch the field. You're going to want to try to put them in a lot of ISOs, that type of stuff with your big guy. That's who your X receiver is going to be in this style of offense. Look at uh, Roman Dunze for Washington last year. He was the, one of the bigger wide receivers. He got in a lot of ISO one-on-ones, big, big jump ball plays, 50-50 balls. So Kendrick Law is not one of them. Kobe Prince is not one of them. Um, uh, Emmanuel Henderson, none of those guys are going to play X. They're not going to line up at the X. Zay Gaines, print is not at the X. I'm sorry. Uh, here we go. Hell. I see a hell. I need to see another hell. Bernard. I can see Bernard out there. Six foot, two, 205. Another Kendrick loss. I think Bernard is 6'1. Bernard is 6'2. My fault. He's 6'2, 200 pounds. Jalen Hell. I'm seeing, I'm, I'm feeling it. So we got Hell Bernard. I got three Hells, two Bernards. Uh. Another hell, four hell, five hell, six hell. I got one Odom, right? Two Odom. And I'm talking about going in the spring. Stop trying to change my narrative. Bernard, Odom, hell, bet. I like that. Bernard, we got another hell. Got Bernard and hell. Bernard, hell. Bernard, hell, 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 hell. Odom. Caleb. Okay, let's do it like this. Here we go. This is how we're gonna, gonna line it up. So this is this is what I'm I'm seeing. I'm gonna start it here. And I'm gonna tell y'all this because <laughs> I'm gonna do this with Bernard. And I'm gonna tell y'all why. I'm gonna tell y'all why in a second. Hold on. Oh, let me let me ungroup this. Hold on. I was wondering why it looked like that. I'm going to do this with Bernard, and I'm going to tell y'all why. Him coming into this offense wasn't just to put him in one spot. Him transferring to Alabama wasn't to put him in one spot. Bernard is going to be our change of pace guy, right? He's going to be the guy you line him up, 
And when you're when you're lining him up, you're you're asking the defense to key him. You're asking the defense to key Kendrick Law. But Kendrick Law is going to be your primary jet motion slot in and out of cuts short distance get the ball in his hands let him do work with the ball after catch and i think bernard is going to fit that mode also but as a secondary option with emmanuel henderson so because I, i'm going to love on you guys and and set y'all up for success i'm gonna do bernard like this with kate up odom like this because i'm telling you there has not been a clip where i haven't seen caleb odom catching a pass from Jalen Miro when it comes to team. I have not seen it. I have not seen a clip where I, you get what I'm saying? He's 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 getting work at the X position, solid work at the X position. And the 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 staff is raving about Caleb Odom. He's not hyped. This this 6'5, 215 pound, 220 pound wide receiver is he's not slow. He's not weak and he can really be a mismatch problem. So um, that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it like this. I'm gonna put them side by side, right? Because Bernard depth chart at wide receiver doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> facts, Caleb. Caleb, Caleb. I'm telling you, trust the process. <clears throat> Not even close. Not even close. We got waddle. We got we got waddle. We got we got different waddle on this squad, and he probably won't even see the field as much this year. He won't even see the field as much this year, man. That's the sad part about it. All right. And then we're going to copy this. Going to paste it. Where my paste? And then we're going to put the Y right here. Give me that. Boom. All right. We got the Y right here. This is our slot. Let's move over to the slot. So I'm going to pull the slot guys available before I ask the question. Before I even ask it. So y'all won't be out of out of, out of of the loop, right? Put my slot guys out here. Just for y'all to see them. I think we know the starter. I mean, this Kendrick Law is going to start at the slot. I'm going to have to copy this. I'm going to have to paste that here, too. Right? And then I'm going to go get another name off the roster because I, I've seen some work, right? I'm going to go get another name by the name of, of, of Cole Adams, right? One of our fan favorites in here. A guy that we waiting to see wake up and get an opportunity. Finally going to be healthy this year. Wasn't healthy as a true freshman. But we saw him starting to get work. We saw him start, start starting to get work towards the end of the season. So I'm excited to see this young man. I can't wait to see him. We got Cole Adams out there. So we're not we're not talking about starters right now. Who's second? Who's second at the slot right now? Here we go. Second, why? Under this comment, let's get it. Y'all see the names right here. These are the guys available for y'all. I'm 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 gonna do this too. I think Jeremy Bernard just let's let's just do this. Jeremy Bernard is gonna play every spot on this offense. I I'm I'm not gonna hold y'all. I've seen him, seen him line up every spot. Jeremy is the leader in that room because of his experience in this offense. So I'm gonna give him the respect, knowing that he's not gonna take a starting spot. Maybe not. He's probably not gonna be a starter anywhere. Maybe his his only opportunity, I believe, is at the Z position, right? And even then, I, I, I'm i telling because Kobe Prentice is there, it's going to be hard for him to start. But rotation is going to be so rapid and fluid that starting doesn't even matter. Starting doesn't even matter. So we say 24, that's Henderson. I got Henderson. Henderson, number two, Henderson. Henderson, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, going to be crazy matchups. Adams, maybe Henderson. I'm, I'm taking Henderson over Adams. Wide receiver. Wife receiver? I don't get it. <laughs> don't know who second shot is going to be, but I need 24 on the field. Hey, you like me, because right now I'm looking at available, and Jeremy Bernard is going to get his, but how much of Henderson are we going to see? Henderson is a former running back. You put him in Kendrick Law and Jet Sweet Motion, back-to-back -back every other play, you, you're going to have to account for it. 
Henderson can get to the perimeter and just go. Like, he is fast. I don't think people realize how fast uh, Emmanuel Henderson was. He came to Bama running a 4 4 1 out of high school. Come on, y'all. Henderson. King is the starting wife receiver. <laughs> y'all a trip, man. Oh, uh, Law Henderson. Y'all like Henderson there? Bet, bet, bet. <laughs> They've been raved about 24. I mean, even Coach Shepard talked about uh, Emmanuel Henderson, you know, at, at the pressers um, post uh, practice. He talked about Emmanuel Henderson. Law Henderson, and I say Henderson is our punt returner. Ooh, I got a little take on that. We'll end the segment talking about punt return and kick return. I got a little take on that. Emmanuel can fly. He definitely needs to play. Facts. So let's let's go, Henderson. They're split in two reps with uh with Bernard. And there's a young guy that's going to get, get some burn, but I don't think this year is his opportunity. We're going to see him like when we see garbage play, right? Not garbage time. I mean garbage play, but garbage time. Um, Bubba Hampton is going to be at slot. I think Amari Jefferson is probably going to be out there at the Z. Same with uh, Rico Scott, probably going to be your 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 new guy. Excuse me, I had to burp. Your new guy in the rotation at, at the X, right? Rico Scott. A lot of these young wide receivers aren't going to get forced into meaningful game game time play, right? And it's just it's just a good thing for them. It's good to have this problem. So look at those wide receivers at the slot. And y'all can't y'all trying to tell me y'all y'all not good with that? Like with those options. People trying to tell us that we're done. <laughs> this is going to get ugly for a lot of teams, y'all. Let's move to the Z position. We got to pick it up a little bit. I'm, I'm dragging this thing out because y'all y'all making some good some good dialogue for these positions. Um, and, and I like it. I like what y'all bringing to the table today. I really do. Like where a lot of y'all heads is at today. Um, let's get Kobe Prentice over here. We got options here. I'm going to copy and paste uh, Jeremy Bernard, right? Because he's going to play there too. Jeremy Bernard going to be everywhere on the field. Uh, let's go to the roster. Let's go to the roster and see who we're missing. So you got, uh, I don't think Cole Adams going to be at the Z. Uh, ju, 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 ju. We got Kobe Prentice. We got, who else? We got Jeremy Bernard, Kobe Prentice. And this is why I said uh, Kobe Prentice and Jeremy Bernard, because of where Bernard going to be able to play at, we're going to see him float in a lot of spots, which is going to make it look like he's a starter. He's the first guy out. Get what I'm saying? And it all it probably depends on the play call. It probably depends on the set, the play set, right? Bubba Hampton was definitely fourth, like fourth group, third, fourth group the other day when I was watching. Nothing bad. He's a true freshman. We got Jaron Hamilton, number 23. Let me get him on the roster. Out there. I saw him out there. I didn't know he was number 23, y'all. That's on me. Hor hey, look, hor horrible tracking by me, right? Horrible tracking by me. That was him. So, inside scoop with that. And I don't know if, if it was if it was just Jeremy Bernard probably taking a breather or what it was, but um, 23 was on with first group running a crosser from the Z position, from the Z. And, um, I mean, dropped the pass, but he was out there. He was out there. I do remember that. We got Terrence Howard on the roster, y'all. Uh, let me go down here to the 80s. I know we got one one or two wide receivers with like the, the old school number. Hey, off topic, not off topic, but kind of segue, whatever you want to call it. Do y'all miss the wide receivers wearing old school numbers? Or do y'all like the newer feel for the for the for the uh low digit numbers? I'm all for the low digit numbers for your skill positions. Wide receivers, I'm all for it. I wore 81 for like two weeks in college and then I asked coach could I switch to a, a, a single uh, or under 20 number and I got switched to 18 which was pretty cool it was way better than, than 85 I think I wore 85 because I was an Ocho Cinco fan so here we go I love the low digits too man you missed the 80s numbers Caleb you you see that, that goes to tell you man you can tell who you grew up in the house with my pops man he 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 don't like he don't too much care for the low digit numbers. He 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 a old, old school guy. But wherever whoever just be productive. Fact, Steven. That's at I'm at that point too. We got so much freaking talent. I think I want to get back to the days of ride outs when every they was doing rock paper scissors for for who was going to go out on the field. And they didn't matter what what position. They was like, "Oh man, they key in this position for this play." Oh man. 
I want a chance, you know. Let's get this up. Um, my device. Boom. Got Jaron Hamilton. All right, so looking at looking at what's available right now, and I'm gonna zoom in for y'all. I know we can't see it right now. Looking at what's available. Who's starting at the Z position right now? Going into spring. Z starter. Right below here. Here we go. Z starter. Let's get the let's get the comments rolling in. Come on. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. Kobe. 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 Yeah. I think y'all catching the drift now. Kobe. Got three Kobe's. Four Kobe's. RIP to the GOAT. Prentice. Prentice. Okay. I guess I just put Prentice there. <laughs> I think I think we understand as a as a as a fan base, I think we understand his value for this team. Even though, even though Bernard will get a lot of reps, he will be looked at as a starter. But Kobe Prentice at the Z position. If you look at what Kobe Prentice does with the ball in his hands, what he does as a route technician, and you look at how Kalen DeBoer keys this certain position, I mean, and we'll get into chalk talk later. And we'll start using our lineups and just picturing how some of these plays are developed. So we'll say Kobe. We'll say Kobe. I got Kobe out there for y'all. Let's say second Z. And y'all, we got to hurry up. We got to hurry up because I got to get up out of here. I got to get up out of here. Second at Z. Second at Z. Are we giving it to Bernard, right? I think we're giving it to Bernard, if I'm not mistaken. We're giving it to Bernard. Yeah. Uh, six for six. I like it, baby. Definitely throwing 30 plus times a game. That's what I'm saying. 30 rep, 30, 30 reps for, for eight receivers. Like you could divide that up and get some good numbers out there. Bernard, yep. I think we we rocking with Bernard. I'm rocking with Bernard as number two. Bernard, Bernard. I'm feeling it. Bernard. Where are you putting Kendrick? Kendrick's the starter at, at slot. Kendrick's the starter at slot. Somebody said Hamilton. Mm, I'm gonna tell y'all about Jaron Hamilton fast gotta get these though gotta get these together gotta get these together got to get these together you can't be just fast and, and dropping everything gotta get these these together we can't have a malik benson moments we can't have those moments this year because this this offense is a, is a, a momentum offense is a builder what's the other option we got we got uh jaron hamilton i'm sorry i don't know if you can see it we got jaron hamilton and we got uh, Jeremy Bernard. So I think Jer uh, Jaron Hamilton is going to be number three. I think Bernard is going to be two. And we got Hamilton at number three, right? Which I believe he's going to get opportunities. Not a lot. Hamilton might Hamilton might only get four or five reps a game starting off. But early on in the season, we're going to see a lot of these guys. Now, this is for going into spring, y'all. This is our lineups going into spring. Right now at the X, we got starting Jalen Hill. At the Y, we got Kendrick Law. At the Z, we got Kobe Prentice. Veterans from last season, very well respected and very well capable of coming in and being those guys. Now, at 2 deep, depends on what set we coming out in. I'm thinking Caleb Odom and, and you know, you got Caleb Odom at the X at 2. You got a uh, first guy off the bench for the Y. I, I believe it's going to be Jeremy Bernard and then Emmanuel Henderson. So I'll do it like this. I'll switch them up like this. I think it'll be Jeremy Bernard preferred as the first guy off the bench there, right? And then uh, you got Emmanuel Henderson right there with him. You know, dividing that up, certain sets, certain uh, you know, going it's gonna it's gonna vary. And then Cole Adams probably be your 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 guy that's getting those relief those relief reps, right? Kobe Prentice, we got Kobe Prentice starting at the Z right behind him, the primary. Replacement for Kobe Prince, I believe, is going to be Jeremy Bernard. And I would hope that this rotation is just whoever could get on the field and knows the offense. Quarterback. Starter right now has been noted and already been put out there going into the spring. It's going to be Jalen Murrow. We're not going to play around with that one. All right. We're on the quarterback. Ty Simpson or Dylan Lonergan as quarterback number two. And I'm only saying those two names because uh, Austin Mack is not in the runnings as a starter right now. And I don't have to. I don't have to be inside scoop to know that. I just. I'm telling y'all right now. A lot of development. A lot of development for him to reach his peak or to get to college, uh, college game ready, SEC ready. Ty definitely number two, or Dylan Lonergan. Ty second. We going Ty. Bet y'all run it up. We ain't got. We ain't even got to sit. Put this one in the chat. We already know what time it is, right? 
Ty's definitely number two. And who's going with for number three, y'all? Who's going it for number three? Who we going with for number three? Y'all could go ahead and start putting number three in there. Who's number three down there in 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 the spot at the QB spot? Got Ty right here. Ty's going into his third year on campus. That's the thing. Ty Ty can stay here, right? And 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 not play this year. Start not start and come back next year and hold it down for a year and really. Build his draft stock because he is, to me, Ty is your pro quarterback. He's just not, he's not bringing more to the table than, to, to the table than Miro. And there's nothing wrong with that, man. Still quality depth, right? Dylan, y'all liking Dylan at number three? I'm liking Dylan too. I'm liking Dylan. I think Dylan, Dylan is probably the best arm talent in the room, honestly. He's really the best arm talent in the room. All these guys are six foot plus, right? Hovering around that 200 pound range. We got some size at quarterback. That's crazy, huh? We ain't seen this. Hey, does Ty transfer, Glenn? I don't think so, brother. I don't think so. I like Ty's energy right now. I think this staff has already kind of told him what type of, uh, what they expect from him. What type of, what what they expect from him. And, um, and, and he's, he's bought in. I think he's bought in. And he also comes from a family. Um, he comes from a family that's all about commitment. You get what I'm saying? They're real big on commitment, finishing the job. And uh, I don't think he's running away from the competition. I think he's going to compete even now for the starting job. Stop. I keep doing the wrong thing. Let's get Dylan out here, right? Dylan. And Austin Mack is going to be on. The, he's going to be on the roster, but we're not going four deep for a quarterback. And, and I'm not I'm not dogging Austin Mack at all, y'all. I'm not, I promise you. He is young. He is 18. He will be 18 going into this season, I believe. Because he came out of school early a year. He reclassified to come to go to Washington. He really didn't get burned there. He's got familiar with the offense, but he didn't get a lot of opportunities to work on technique. He didn't get to develop game speed, right? So he's still going to be freshman like energy, freshman like um nuances. And then also, he's at a practice now where he's not going against two and three star talent. He's going against five star talent that's at the third string position in a lot of these positions. And then secondary wise, we don't have a lot of guys in the secondary, so he's going to get five star talents that he went against in uh, that he would have been going against coming into this year, anyways. So that's that's why I think Austin Mack is going to be a, a project, and if if he buys into it, he will be the next great. Now for this position. I think I'm gonna do this because I know this is what I, I I believe. I believe this is how it's gonna be, right? Same thing we've seen in recent of uh, recent times. I think it's gonna be the same coming into this season with our running backs. You got Justice Haynes, one A, and you're gonna have Jan Miller, one B. Who y'all think gonna be the second string guy? <laughs> Who's going to be second string running back? Talk to me. Talk to me, undefeated. Who's going to be second string guy? We got one A, one B with Jam. They're going to be a one two punch. And we have one two punches. It, it, it really don't matter who start the game. It's about who creates the momentum, who creates the who creates the momentum first, who starts the rhythm, and then how they feed off of each other. And that's what's going to happen with the with these two. So Jam and Justice one A, one B. Somebody saying Richard Young. Okay. I'll give y'all Richard Young, but I'm I, I don't like doing that to y'all. I don't like doing that to y'all. There's a there's a freshman that's there right now. And he is creating a lot of buzz. Not hype. But a lot. A lot. Listen, listen, chat. A lot of buzz. I'm going to give y'all y'all roster, though. I'm going to give y'all y'all roster. I'm going to give y'all y'all depth chart. I promise you, as soon as I find the young man, 25, Richard, Richard Young, y'all, I 
And then I'm going to do this one too. Go ahead and have it set up. Hold on. I'm just screenshotting y'all. My fault. All right. I'm back. Here we go. All right. We got Daniel Hill left. Right. But y'all going with Richard Young, right? Y'all going with Richard Young? Little inside scoop. I've been hearing that there have been a lot of teams reaching out to Richard Young during this offseason. Uh, even after the Michigan game, the Michigan loss. Uh, that I don't know if y'all remember, but there were rumors of Richard Young entering the transfer portal, right? Right? Um, those rumors, because of, of, of this young man here, Daniel Hill, um, those rumors, I, I can't confirm or, nor deny but they seem realistic when I looked at practice Friday. I'm just saying Daniel Hill is putting in work and he's, he's college size, kind of re college ready. Uh, literally the big back you got, you got thunder and then you got lightning here. You got thunder with justice. You got lightning. Who's your change of speed back. Who's your power back. Justice can be a power back, but he's a, your all around back. This is your change of speed back. Who's the power back. Richard young is a power back. He can run. But I think this is this is shaping up to be more so this rather than this, if, if that makes sense. I think this is shaping up to be more so this rather than this. And I'm going to show you all it is really to me by season start. It might be this. Working left or right. That's what it might be. All right. So let's look at our let's look at our depth chart, man. Oh, that look neat. That look neat, y'all. Look, I'm gonna do this though. And that don't that you know what that don't do nothing for uh Bernard. All right. So I'm gonna find a way to screenshot this graphic here. And we're gonna organize it and I'm gonna post it. I'm going to screenshot and get it posted. This is the undefeated depth chart, offensive depth chart for the 2024-2025 season. Inside, inside the undefeated offensive depth chart. 2024. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Right? Font size, let's make it a little bit bigger. That's that's too big. I don't want that much. I go about 220. 240? 240, shouty? All right, y'all. There we go. All right, so we're going to clean that up. We're going to organize it. And um, we're going to get this thing popped off, man. I appreciate y'all for hanging out today. Hey, Run up the likes if you haven't already. We got 188 in the chat. I think we up above that for likes. Um, appreciate y'all for hanging out. It's been fun as always, man. Y'all know, y'all know how I do, man. I just, I just come in here. I try to vibe. Today we talking about the offensive depth chart. We built the offensive depth chart. Y'all was able to do it. I'm gonna screenshot it. Look out for a tweet, right? And y'all comment on it. People gonna run it up. People gonna talk. They, they different views. Let's, let's, let's create some, some, some traffic. Let's create some debate. And um, I think y'all have a solid roster. Let's go back to it. Let's go back to it real quick before we get up out of here. I think y'all got a very solid roster. I think y'all do. We we disagree in a few spots, but I think we I think we solid. Whether y'all, you know, regardless of if it's a uh I took the center position away. That's what happened. All right, here we go. So let's start over here at quarterback. At quarterback, we got Jalen Monroe, Ty Simpson, Dylan Lana getting behind them. Running back, we got Justice and Jam. Then behind them, we got Daniel Hill and Richard Young. Well, no, y'all said Richard Young and then Daniel Hill. I'm going to leave y'all roster like it was. Leave y'all roster like it was, right? Um, At the X, we got Jalen Hill. Behind him, we got Caleb Odom and then Jeremy Bernard. 
both of them splitting that two that that two a two b um left tackle got elijah pritchett left guard tyler booker parker brelsford at center Jaden Roberts right guard will conform me at right tackle second string line we got miles mcveigh rock montgomery james brockemeyer olis alanin and Nikhil bertrand all right tight end we got cj dupree followed up with danny lewis i think that's the first one we disagree at kendrick law starting Emmanuel Henderson and Jeremy Bernard, 2A, 2B. Kobe Prentice at Z. And Jeremy Bernard at number two. And Jaron Hamilton, number three. Cole Adams is down here somewhere, chilling, having a um a snicker, right? A little snicker, probably laughing. And before we get out of here, we're going to have that debate about the return game, y'all. But there goes y'all roster. And we're going to get it screenshotted, going to get it posted. I might do it in a different format so it could be kind of laid out. I might just type it up, right? And um, get it, get it posted. So yeah, like that, like that, like that. Hey, so the debate, return guys, return guys. So I saw some names. Emmanuel Henderson. We seen Emmanuel Henderson get thrown down there. Uh, we saw uh, uh, it, as okay. So for punt return, punt return. Who are we listing for punt return? Real quick, who y'all want for punt return? I saw Cole Adams. I saw Emmanuel Henderson. Me personally, I had my take on it. I said get a, a young guy out there for punt return, one of those young DBs with that skill sets. Um, somebody said Jeremy Bernard, right? Punt return, punt return. Mbakwe, yeah. Tip, you right there with me. I, I want Mbakwe back there for punt return. Somebody said Kobe. Kobe Prentice? Are you talking about... Who is that? Kobe? You talking about Kobe Prentice? Kobe Prentice ain't doing no type of return. Not at all. He is not that... that. Kobe Prince is not that not that dude. He know he a wide receiver technician. He, he a wide technician. Emmanuel Henderson, Kendrick Law, <laughs> Bernard or Adams. I think y'all got hope. Wishful thank you for Cole Adams. He's not a return guy. Cole Adams is is going to be the next slate bowling for us. Another route technician, quick guy, shifty guy, get in and out of his cuts. Short pass game, you reliable hands, right? Henderson, Bubble. I don't think Bubble going to get a chance this year, Moon Rocker. Mbakwe. I like Mbakwe. I'm telling y'all. His speed is unmatched on that roster right now. Mbakwe. Who? Manny. Mbakwe. Bro, Adams returned for some for us last year. Hollywood. I like that. I can see that. I can see that. And we talking punt return. Had to come back and say Kalen Edwards, another Auburn deal. Yeah, I seen that. Yep, I seen that. I seen that. Lauren Bertrand at kickoff lot punt. Nee. I like that. But realistically, that's what you when you think about saving, that's what you probably would see. I'm gonna tell y'all, look at history. Go go start doing kind of like research of coaches. Don't necessarily look at personnel on the on the um, roster. Look at how coaches use their personnel at other stops. Look at what Kalen DeBoer did. Jeremy Bernard wasn't a starting receiver, but he was on punt return and kick return, right? Jeremy Bernard is going to be a, a, a very... He's going to be listed as a starter some type of way. He may not be first, but he's going to have starter-type play. Kendrick Law is going to be a starter. If Coach Kalen DeBoer and his staff continue the trend of using guys that aren't starters... I'm leaning towards punt return, Mbakwe, kick return. I'm leaning towards the likes of Ryan Williams and possibly, possibly an Emmanuel Henderson back there. You got two offensive guys on kick return. That's who you usually want on kick return. You want guys who who get the ball and get in space quick and can make moves, right? I, I like I like Ryan Williams and um and uh Emmanuel Henderson at kick return. Uh punt return. Looking at uh I'm looking at Jalen Mbakwe. Jalen Mbakwe probably first. He's probably going to get the first opportunity. But then also, um, for safety purposes, for experience purposes, I can see Jeremy Bernard still manning the punt return. Um, he was very effective for Washington last year. I think we probably uh, bring him back to that that to start the season off if we don't give Mbakwe an opportunity. Um, Mbakwe probably the only guy in the secondary right now that is going to be an electric uh, punt return guy. Yeah, so, yeah. We will not miss Caleb Downs. I don't believe we will either. Yes? Why not? Russell, you want to have this debate right now? Because you just, you almost, 
You almost caught you almost caught something, Russ. And you supposed to be my boy. 160 pound at kickoff. Yes. Have you seen how fast this young man is? I'd rather have him at kickoff where he's not getting jammed up off the line. He's not being pressed. <laughs> he's not being pressed. He, he ain't nobody pressing him off the line at kickoff return. He got space. He got blockers already in front of him. You get what I'm saying? That's what I'm that's what I'm seeing when you're talking about kick return. You got blockers set out in front of you. The, the, hang time is not going to be there, right? Yeah, hang the hang time, they got to get the ball. And, and you got guys running at your full speed, unbalanced. You just, you, you're very, he has experience doing that. I mean, everything. So, yeah. Kickoff most dangerous play in the game, though. It is. It is. But for a guy like Ryan Williams, who doesn't have to worry about, you know, learning the full playbook, you give him opportunities to just be a football player in those moments. Right? I see what you're saying. I just don't want him hurt. He can get hurt lining up at wide receiver. He can get hurt in practice. He can get hurt getting out of bed today. Yeah. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm just saying that's that's my logic behind it. And 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 yeah, he is special. He's very special. Nah, he gonna I think you don't keep a town like that cuffed very long. Coach Kalen DeBoer is not. He didn't waste no time with German Bernard. German Bernard had to come in from Michigan State, get get the nuances of the offense, and he started getting reps in the offensive scheme towards the middle of the season. But he was definitely he was definitely uh uh implemented from the jump in the punt return and the kick return game. And Ryan Williams faster than than I, I think Ryan Williams coming into this wide receiver room might be the third fastest guy. Might be the third fastest guy. You got Kendrick Law, Emmanuel Henderson, and maybe Ryan Williams right there. I like Williams and Mbakwe to get the the if we're talking about starters at positions or at, at you know spots. If we list a starting roster, I think you might get Ryan Williams. If we talk about freshman starters, you you might get Ryan Williams at kick return and you might get Jalen Mbakwe at punt return. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can feel that. I can feel that. Smook, you you at practice, you have an inside track to things. You gotta let us know we just have opinions. But ultimately we'll trust what you say. Hey, listen, I and, and my 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 time at practice is limited. So I still just go off what I what I've seen and, and my my analysis from watching football for years. You get what I'm saying? Especially Alabama football, but now you got a new era in Coach DeBoer. I go and watch Washington film and that look at that roster. Okay, 20, 2022. How did he use his roster? Young guys on that roster. How did he use those young guys? Instead of throwing them out there in the fire to figure this offense out in game speed, you spot play them, bring them along the first four to six weeks. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's that. I'm, I'm just like y'all. It's all opinion. I'm not shooting anybody's opinion down or anything like that. I promise you. I appreciate y'all for, for interacting. Sorry, autocorrect. Keep screwing up my comments. Russell, that means you typing too fast. <laughs> Decontamination is crazy. Ha <laughs> ha, you must work with chemicals. <laughs> I was wondering where they came from, man. <laughs> I was like, decontamination? He is not to stop the rumors. He is not what? Let's just not leave him. Oh, yeah, yeah, we know that, man. Coach G ain't going nowhere. Coach G, I don't know if y'all seen the um the 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 interview I did with him, but uh, he said the next three years. He's giving, at, at minimum, the next three years. At minimum, you know? So it is what it is, y'all. Hey, but appreciate y'all for hanging out. Y'all know what time it is, man. It's time for your boy to get up out of here. We've been having a great time tonight. Y'all know it's been, I mean, today, early. Um, I got to get out of here. Your boy about to get another job, y'all. I'm about to be on the grind. I'm trying to stack this paper. You know, I got, I got bills to pay. Can I get to the job? But yeah, I'm, I'm going to be working at a gym, y'all. So I, it's going to help me stay in there, be consistent with my workouts. Um, I got a vlog uploading today. I'm going to be uploading this vlog here in about, three hours right and um yeah we're gonna get this thing popping check me out at coach smook on all platforms right um also if you got any inside uh smook scoop stuff you want for the smook scoop hit your boy at the uh coach smook at gmail.com uh that means for any recruits you want me to check out any uh any under the radar guys any highlights you want me to look at right any um real reality or reach subjects we definitely want to get those into the email right 
Y'all send it to my email. We can get it in. We can get it popping. And we can make this thing fun like we always do. I've been uh I've been privileged to, you know, my following is growing. If you're not following me on Twitter yet, definitely follow me on Twitter. But we got Snapchat back rolling. We got uh Instagram. We got TikTok. We got uh YouTube. That's what we're rolling on. Don't worry about uh uh working working on Facebook. I'm not too heavy on Facebook anymore. I might just delete that whole thing in general, right? But Appreciate y'all for hanging out. What's up, Antoine? Gonna ride 45 minutes and come car shot with me, Smook, my boy. Hey, Antoine, where you at? Inbox me, my brother. You can hook me up. I'll do it. I swear. I'm looking for God to bless me. You know, we, uh, hey, listen. Y'all know I always leave y'all with, with words of encouragement. Hey, sometimes it ain't about your finances. It's about your favor, man. Make those connections. Build those relationships, man. Help everybody out. Jasper, oh, I can make that trip. I might be able to find a ride. Yup, I can make that trip. I know where you at, Antoine. Shoot your, shoot your info to my inbox, man. If you're on Twitter, hit me up on, on Twitter. Any one of them, uh, uh, them, them social medias. I'm going to be checking for it in about 45 minutes, my guy. I'm going to be checking for it in about 45 minutes. Let me know something, though, for real. And, and some of y'all have been reaching out. Um, some of y'all have, uh, have been reaching out, you know, trying to give me some of the connects you got here in, um, in Tuscaloosa. I appreciate that very much I, I really do um but yeah i gotta go y'all i gotta go catch up with y'all to, uh tonight i will be on at eight but the rest of the schedule y'all see it right here um y'all see the rest of the schedule we got uh coach i mean coach jance at six with fans reaction 7 p.m 7 p.m we got just my humble opinion with coach sean and then you got me for the nightcap uh the night tip and uh with the smooth scoop we'll go over y'all want to do defensive depth chart tonight you know, let me know. Check on Twitter. We'll we'll see what we're gonna do tonight. So let's get into it. Appreciate y'all. It's been fun. Hey, y'all know how I like to leave y'all, man. Y'all know how I like to leave y'all with a big old. Let me get right with a big old roll. Y'all have a good one. See y'all later, y'all.